stream people how are all of you happy Hello. halloween Holly, you have a very linear <laughs> nosebleed. It's just a little bad. Happy Halloween. We're all here. Um, well. Except uh, for those of us that aren't. Um, <laughs> Notably. I'm not entirely sure where Beth is at the moment. She could come in and just destroy all the video. Who knows? I am not the person that does. So. I'm bringing the mic in close here. Everybody else, how you doing? Happy Halloween. Great. So you're Where all you, wearing Holly? your spookiest cosplays? I'm Akira. A golden, but you can't tell because I'm too washed out because I'm a white person. <laughs> person. Dragonborn. Thing. My character. And Holly, I will give you inspiration for the session. For the wonderful character cosplay. Is it a bag full of books? It sure is. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love it. Excellent. Excellent. You know, and you know what? Light reading. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give Shu inspiration for this session as well. So Shu, you get inspiration. You get advantage on one comment of your choice during the session. <laughs> You can tweet two comments, or not tweet, uh, you can post two comments and then use the better of the two later. Yeah, tweet, if you tweeting's want. a class feature, you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you're high enough level to tweet yet. Um, <laughs> you can tweet a number of times equal to your charisma uh, modifier per long rest. Negative one. Oh, <laughs> delete, delete, delete. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Tweets are protected. Fair enough. All right, so last time on trying to find all of the windows I need open. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Let's see now. I'm just going to wait for the dead air here. Nice, embrace it. So, a party after being victorious in their efforts to claim the staff of the elders, spent last session meeting with the emperor of the Dracora Empire, Emperor Stanmore Dracora himself. And much to the party's surprise, um, things played out pretty much exactly as the deal that they had made with the Dracora Empire dictated, in that the Empire <laughs> acquired possession of the staff, which would Who then knew? be transported for safekeeping to the Bremerology Archives in Vesular, a city about a week's journey south of the capital city of Chora, which they are in now. The party uh, set about... Um, planning for what will be their next uh, campaign into the world around them, a campaign to rid the land across the sea of an evil lich king, King Torin, a lich whom they had no small part in uh, enabling the creation of and are eager to return across the sea to right the wrongs from previous attempts. Little is known about what is happening behind the mountains that surround the island nation of Eridor. But the music is happy. <laughs> so is the party. So, with uh, that in mind, Nomarius set out to start a crusade of light and valor trying to rally the major religions and their temples around the cause of fighting on death and Torin. Traveling first to his, uh, I don't know, home, home temple? <laughs> home temple, uh, Heronius, temple of his religion. Um, they, uh, he was met there with a warm welcome and, uh, 
it seems as though both the temples of Heronius and Pelor um, are willing to unequivocally back this cause as it uh, aligns directly with their uh, with their particular religious views. So also in just of this is the rest of the party inspired by this effort. Um, Tebrin has sought out to uh, weave the tale of uh, the potential return of the stag, the mm -hmm. freedom fighter who fought alongside the party um, in their struggles against King Torin back in Arador. She was sacrificed as part of the ceremony that uh, allowed King Torin to ascend to Lichdom. Her fate is unsure, but uh, they... For all, uh, for all the hope they have, it is very likely that she is dead indeed. I mean, to be fair, we did we did cremate her corpse. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> you got rid of the evidence, what? But perhaps the spirit of the stag remains. We shall see. You also received a message back in reply to your message um, from Orisha. Tebrin's sister, a uh, creature who's now um, moving moving through time and space uh, as if it were streets uh, within a city and has had some hand in manipulating almost all of the events uh, of the past few months, uh, getting the party to all of their various destinations and quest locations and even playing a strong hand in uh pretty much all aspects of roswell's life as we have now discovered arisha wants to meet in one week's time in vesular but was unclear as to uh the intended purpose of this meeting she's typically vague in her almost uh prophetic uh attempts at communicating Roswell has also learned that she is a member of the Rhea Rukul, um, who are a race of forgotten elves, previous inhabitants of the area now um, that has been conquered by the Decora Empire and thought to be extinct. However, with Akira scrying in on the underdark areas beneath the city of Chora, she has found that there are survivors and their awakening perhaps in sinister company. So we leave off now with that revelation as you all, I think we ended at the end of night. So we'll go to the next morning from this. Um, I have a question. Yes. It was something that I should have addressed last session. But has any have any of us heard anything from Siora? <laughs> nope. Uh you were going to go meet her but you didn't. I was. You said I need to meet up with my girlfriend and then you didn't. Did I? <laughs> right. Siora has become the proverbial horse of this party. <laughs> um <laughs> D&D horses are never safe. They're always forgotten. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember like you saying that you were going to go do that, but then we kind of other stuff happened. I think I may have gotten sidetracked by the whole stag that comes again, or stag that will come again thing. You got inspired. I did. I inspired myself, yeah. which is not a mechanic that I actually have. <laughs> she didn't want the plot to stag Nate. Oh boy. Oh dear. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, you can't fuck destiny. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay but like we didn't see her and did we tell her lo those many weeks ago to go someplace specific we tried to and she was like i can make it on my own Great. Keep, keep in mind, there. you didn't leave. It wasn't weeks that you were in the the temple of the elders. Months. It was a few days. Yeah, days, days. actually, okay. yeah, I think it, 
In real Cause, time, it was because you many went down months. there. You decided to not go in immediately, so you spent a night, and then the next day you went in. You were in there for about a day, and then you came out and spent the night there. So it was about two and a half, three days. Okay, I imagine if she's here, that she would know we're here. That's just how I see Sierra. Well, I mean, presumably because we were probably staying at the Brunheld, right? Sanctuary? At least some of us. I mean, I feel like the the parts of us that weren't aren't here. By which I mean Kendra. Yes. Kendra, Kendra stayed in her estate. Okay. Um, could I have... Uh, <laughs> Beth is here now. Um... Could I have, uh, I, you know, I'll just say I'll do it this morning. That I just want to ask around the sanctuary a little bit and see, um, see if I can see if anybody's seen her. All right. Um, asking around, the sisters there uh, say that they have not, in fact, seen Siora at all in the past few days. Okay. Don't like that. Um. We'll have to check every day spa. <laughs> so you'd like to spend the next day? No. Um, okay. I, I guess I'll just... Let's, I mean, I guess let's just do this the easy way, right? I'm going to cast Sending uh, to Siora and say uh, we all got out in one piece and ask her where she is. All right. Spell fails. <gasps> Fuck me. <laughs> Do I know what could cause something like that to happen? Uh, there are several things that could cause this. Uh, one, the creature you're trying to send to could no longer be alive. Okay. <laughs> um, two, there could be some type of ward or thing blocking the spell. Um, and three, I think. Let me check the third condition. Girlfriend's not taking your calls, man. <laughs> That's rough. Because I mean, I, there's always there's a percentage chance that the spell will fail if they're not in the same plane of existence. As yeah, you, so but that's it doesn't the other. Automatically fail. Yeah, so that's the other. Metagaming it slightly. I'm gonna say it's not that one. So yeah, so the other the other condition that this might not work is if they're on a different plane of existence. Okay. Um. Okay. I mean, I, I, he probably does that while we're all, like, eating breakfast, and he's, like, he's eating and, like, absentmindedly, like, doing the components for the spell, and, it, and then he, you just see him go, like, bone white. We do? Hmm. Evren, are you okay? Um, I don't suppose any of you have heard from Ciara? So I mean, we talk all ago. the time because we're super cool. No, I don't. Right. I mean, I'm sorry. I was kind of snarky. Is there something wrong? Um, I just tried to uh, contact her and didn't get anything. Like anything. Anything. That's really not just. My sister has decided to be a dick and not respond to your messages. Not that kind of nothing. Right. Um. That's not good. Sh should should we um go see if she's at her house? Maybe. Did we talk to Kendra? Because Kendra, I know, went there and she found out that the house was completely empty. Did we? Did that get communicated to us? I don't recall. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Either. Then yes, that's her. Tebrin is not finishing breakfast and it's just uh, just like stands up and heads towards the Havel Estate. 
All right. Although there's other stuff that people want to do, since if he's heading towards the Havel estate, we should wait for Beth to show up. Right. Well, Beth will be here when she gets here, so... Is a person a creature? No, we're, we're things. People are creatures, yes. Okay. Um... Because if it's morning, I it's can morning. be looking through my spells and whatnot, and... I mean, I can I can cast locate creature. Is that a certain distance? It is. I mean, we might need to walk around the city, but it's it's one thousand feet. So it's less than a quarter of a mile. I would say I could just go ahead and scry on her, but if there's some sort of protection thing, well, I mean that might not be a bad idea though. I mean, I can do it if you want, when or we, we can go look first. I mean, because if she's, if she's, can you scry on something that's dead? Duh. I mean, Tamron, I'm sorry. It's just the truth. We're just trying to think about stuff. Uh, Tamron is just like, has like, he got like most of the way out and then you guys like started talking. So he's like, he's like hovering by the door. <laughs> when we left and Siora was like, oh, I can handle myself and took off into the city. At that point, the Havels were still, like, a collectible item to the, the cops, right? The way it was left was that uh, both Kendra and Siora were given to kind of a temporary uh, reprieve, depending on how the events of the Staff of the Elders went. Okay, so she had free reign of wherever. She yeah, didn't so run into she, official problems. She was not Just being hunted by the law. Ones. Okay. I'm trying to see if divination would do. Tebrin, she's your girlfriend. Where would she go? That's what I'm trying to think through right now. Don't actually do a ton of talking. Uh, oh. I don't. Ah. Uh, <laughs> ah. ah. That's so gross. Not really. Uh, uh. Anyway, I mean, sure. I mean, like, yeah, that's you do it. I'm hip. I, I uh, uh, stop now. Everybody stop. <laughs> Decorum and dignity, damn it. <laughs> All right. How about this? If let's go look at the house and maybe along the way we could. Is there some sort of office like a downtown like what, what would post office? Not. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mail a letter real quick. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have enough of those places. Anyway, um, like a, like a city hall type thing where like there would be death records or such. Records of. Like death records or. Um, um, death records. Some, yeah. Something um. Like yeah, there are sort of. Um, in the in the Ministry of the Interior, there are kind of like records of the census type nature. So, um, I'm there's gonna... there's no formalized like birth and death type certificates. That stuff is not really documented. Um, okay, uh, I I do want to stop and see if I can just uh, one of the, my sisters that's you know probably been familiar with Siora in the hallway. And ask if they've seen her recently, um, because she may have uh, also been here for other reasons. I haven't seen Siora since um, since you all departed. Uh, what was it? Uh, weeks ago, months maybe. You were. You stayed here for quite some time, and uh, Siora did as well. Yeah. And then you all returned and left to go somewhere, and now you're back. Um, but I haven't, I haven't seen her since when you all left. Okay. Has there any been, you know, you know the stuff that's been going on with the Havel trial? Um, or I mean, like peripherally, yes, I. Nothing with her name coming up. 
who her her name was mentioned as someone who was um associated with all the she kind of like leans in the the devil worship yeah no it's super messed up but it wasn't her her mom was a little weird um understandably so i suppose i mean they're all a bit odd that family yeah like a lot is it do you think it's money that does it to you or do you think it's their genes i genes i really think it's um i think it's just the family i think they're all they're all quite crazy yes it's the genes yeah yeah see what pants has to do with it <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, sister. <laughs> I I got I got nothing. I come back. <laughs> she hasn't been seen around here. Don't you have your magics where you can Well that's what I was saying. If, you know, if we don't see her at the house, then I'll definitely do a scry. Alright. So what are you scrying on? Well if if we don't see her at the Oh, house. so you're going to house first. Gotcha. If, if that's okay. Or if you just want me to do it, I'll do Whatever it. Whatever you want is fine with me. This is to everybody. I don't care what they want. <laughs> Why don't you do it here? Because that's faster. Okay. I'm kidding. Yeah. All right. I will. Um, do you have anything of Suarez by chance, Tevrin? Do I have anything of Sierra's? Yeah, like anything that she owned. That was a question to the t to the DM. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have exchanged uh, locks of hair, bits of nails, body parts, <laughs> possessions or garments, likeness or pictures? This bruise is in the shape of a slap, and it's oh. Um. Hold on, I'm checking. Um, well, if we want to scry on my mother, I've got something for that, but no, I don't think I have anything, and he is not the type who would have. Okay. And so then, like, unless you... she gave him a token, he wouldn't have, like, exchanged something with her. Well, she's a lady of uh, high standing. She may that... have done just that. Didn't she do I, that, though? A... You don't necessarily need that, though, to do this spell. No, I don't. It no, just I helps. Know. I did... Okay. Did she do it? I don't remember. I feel or, like she might have like given because I gave her my sword for a while. I don't know, maybe not. I might be making it up in my head. Anyway, we don't need that. I mean, she already is familiar to you, so yeah. So I'll cast scrying on Siora Havel. Okay. <laughs> And what is your DC? Uh, my DC is 17 now. All right. So oh. you take the time to perform the scrying ritual, thinking of Siora in your mind, and it feels as if the spell begins to try to focus, and you sort of see what you recognize as all of Chora and it's kind of hones in for a little bit. And as you feel like it should kind of like lock on and bring you down sort of into the thing you're scrying on, it kind of loses focus and just the spell just dissipates. So, um, question from experience about doing scrying, like, I guess I, would know exactly is that because like of some award or a yeah so of some sort? um you would you would know that it seems like the spell itself completed successfully in that you were able to kind of tap into the target but then when you went as far as to try to like observe the target 
by creating this invisible sensor near them. That was kind of like misdirected and just eventually kind of disapparated. And it's likely due to some type of magical warding. Okay. Um, I, the spell worked. It's just, it, I couldn't focus on her. I think she might be warded in some way. Oh. Do you oh, think... Look, I mean, it's, it's not ideal, but it's... it's uh... Was she in possession of the ring of mind shielding that we had, or was it an amulet? We didn't have one of mine children. We had detect thoughts, uh, which I currently have because I think we all decided that nobody could be trusted with it. It's true, nobody can. Be. It's true, but I can I can use it anyway. <laughs> but this way, the party isn't enabling you. <laughs> That's true. Uh, um. Do you think maybe she would be with your sister, Tavern? I she's never met my sister. I know, but your sister well, being that who we your know. sister is. Um I mean technically I suppose that anything is possible. I'm hardly uh, up to date on Draylo's choices or whereabouts. Uh hmm. Uh, it's also, I mean, uh, and then my what? other thought, my other train of thought is maybe she went down to the listening pools herself. She kind of seemed at peace there. I thought you said you could scry at the listening pools. I thought she was in pain there. I thought it calmed her. Mm. I thought it. I thought it, it made everything quieter for her. I think it did the opposite. Yeah, is my recollection. But uh, I also believe that since, since we had left, I believe that whatever power she had, um, <laughs> hi Beth. Hello. We're I'm pretty, sorry. we're pretty sure your sister isn't dead. That's the good news. Oh, oh okay. Someone fill me on Discord. <laughs> you can. I need to redo the cameras. So why don't we? Uh... Um, okay. Somebody fill me in. Can I get a or... recap? Again, we just go to the one side. <laughs> just, I don't think I can. Oh, yes, I can if I go. All the way. There we go. There well, we go. I can't move. Oh, I went too far. Um, <laughs> so Tevrin tried to do a sending to Ciara. It failed entirely. Uh, and so Akira just tried to scry her. And it seems like she like bounced off some sort of ward. So the good news is that probably the sending failed because of a ward and not because your sister has been brutally murdered. That's encouraging. So that's where we're at okay. right now. Perfect. That didn't take nearly as long as I had hoped. Oh, okay, wait. Okay. <laughs> well, here, I found my note uh, about Sierra. When she didn't feel well, all of the voices she heard, uh, the pools are the same thing, except for it's more clear. So I guess, yeah, it, the voices are louder there. Yeah, because okay. her power, well... Anyway, what I was going to say, now I'm going to switch to my, back to my character voice, since we are doing this in character. Um she she hasn't had access to whatever power she had since um since we had left so perhaps and i mean this would have been an extraordinarily stupid thing for her to do but perhaps she went looking for them if they were if she i mean she was i believe under the impression that they were connected to the listening pools in some form it had certainly affected her pool mm. do you think that she felt super weak and driven to do that? I I think that... And Kendra, you, Kendra isn't here. I love Kendra dearly, but um, she isn't necessarily the easiest person to have as a sister. So you're saying it's Kendra's Imagine fault. that. <laughs> what about... Wait, 
We're forgetting someone. What about her brother? Their brother. Yes, we have no idea where Auburn is. Except that he, he but he f like forswore the family, didn't he? Yeah. I also don't think he uh, was a purveyor of magical wards, if you will. No, but yeah. she's, oh, she's I mean, pretty, like, savvy. She can... Oh, look, we're fixed. Um, I mean, the other... We, we are familiar with... Uh, we have a friend who belongs to a, uh, a group that may know a thing or two about abjuration magic. Oh, oh you want you want to ask him where she is? Karut's our friend. Karut's my friend. Well, okay. I don't know where Karut is. Some friend. I mean, to be <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, half the time you lot don't know where I am either. So, same statement. <laughs> so, you all are headed to the Havel Estate. Yes, we are. All right. You know your way there. Um, you arrive. It seems largely vacant. So this is the Havel Estate. I am going to go... Oh, the door is, like, locked? Kendra, did you lock the doors? Um, where am I right now? In the Havel Estate. I probably didn't lock the doors. <laughs> Doors are open. I usually, open the doors. Usually the peasants do that for me. <laughs> um, hello? Walking into, I presume, like the kind of entrance hall. I can't hear you. It's, it's a really big house. <laughs> I can house sound my horn. Actually, for once, that may be an excellent idea. For once, it's always the best idea. Now that I have your blessing, I'm not sure I want to. Toot, toot. Oh, well. is that the right uh, noise? Uh, <laughs> that is not correct, but <laughs> mine's more like an air horn situation. It's <laughs> <blaring. laughs> Erroneous! <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a YouTube blurb thing, but okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll just blow up the sound the horn and let uh, everybody in the residence and neighborhood know we are here. I, uh, I come running. <laughs> what the fuck let you into the house? The door was open. That sounds unlikely. Well, we're I here. Mean, which isn't to say locks can't stop me. Nothing can. But in this case, it wasn't necessary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Casa del Havelio. Thanks. I think that's I think that's orcish. Um, uh, have you seen your sister? No, actually, I've been looking at all of the rooms. Um, I made it through my bedroom, and then I fell asleep. Uh, have you seen her anywhere? No, we can't find her. I can't cast sending to her. Akira can't scry her. Right. But if she's in the area, she will come to us now. <laughs> if she Drawn irresistibly by the air horn of Feronius. Um, and my brother? Do we have any idea where he is? I was. No offense, but I'm significantly less invested in your brother. Uh, okay. <laughs> not, not not exactly an answer to my question, but I'll I'll let him know. Fuck you from from Tevrin. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we don't know where you, we don't know where your your brother is. We don't know where your father is. We don't know where your sister is. We seem to have found you. That's the that's the summary of our Havel adventures thus far today. Okay, well, I'm glad you at least found me. Um, we know where your father is. Where is he? In jail. Okay. In custody. I, In... I take it back. We do know where your father is. <laughs> good, good, good detective work, Kira. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> No, Marius, we found her. You don't need to keep doing that. No, no, she's still missing. We just found Kindra. <laughs> the Horn of Havel summoning. <laughs> <laughs> Uncommon magical item. Yes, unfortunately, it offers no control method, so Havel often are summoned irate. Well, uh, 
Um, do you mind if we search the house for her then, since you just, you know, found your room and that was pretty much Of course. It. F feel free. Don't touch anything, Akira. Touch That's everything, okay. Akira. As I run my hand <laughs> down the hallway. <laughs> um, <laughs> where would she go? Because she probably wouldn't come here because they were probably looking for her. I would. What I would like to do is I would like to start in her room and I would like to look specifically for any signs that something has been disturbed. Like, did she come here? Did she grab some stuff and leave? Like, is there signs that like somebody went to her room and then went someplace else in the house? Maybe she's warding herself. I mean, po possible or she got a, a scroll from someone or had someone do it or... Right. So therefore it's self-inflicted warding. It's pretty pretty smart though so, for Fiora. <laughs> you'd like to visually inspect her room, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Alright, make an investigation roll. That should not have been an advantage, but still twenty-three. Alright, uh looking around, everything sort of in the house that you've seen, because you've been in the house before, um there's no more sort of fresh plants or anything uh the the general state of the estate is one of neglect um for it seems several weeks there's dust starting to collect a little bit on things uh going around in Sior's room it does look like the room has been searched not like completely like uh torn torn apart in like a unorganized sense but it does things things have been taken out and uh, look like they have been put back after being searched through like it looks like um everything is hung in the closet uh rather than kind of strewn about in other various places um the bed is unmade um but looking through it, it doesn't look like it's unmade as a result of somebody sleeping in it. It looks like it's it's more just like they kind of undid all the sheets or something and checked around and then remade the bed and um, things. You can tell there's like certain wear marks on the bureau where items likely have sat for a long time and they are moved slightly from those places Um Things have been opened and closed. Signs like that. Like, like everything in the room has been gone through. Okay. Probably from all those guards, like, looking for evidence against the Havel family. All right. And any sign of, I don't know, movement from that room into other rooms? Or does the entire house kind of have that same... Uh, looking ar looking around, and Kendra, this is something you've kind of uh, noticed a bit with your things as well. The whole house is like that. There okay. is no no footlocker or small chest or cupboard or anything that has not been opened and closed. Um, anything that sort of might obfuscate a different portion of the house has been moved and put back. Looks like... Care was taken in the search, but everything was pretty thoroughly searched nonetheless. Okay. And does it seem like all of her stuff is there? Um, there's a lot of stuff in the room. You that don't necessarily <laughs> you don't necessarily know the <laughs> the depth of Sierra's collection of material possessions. Uh there I'm gonna is, go out on a limb and say a lot. <laughs> there is there is likely probably enough clothes to um provide a wardrobe for two or three people. Uh, there's all manner of jewelry and such. There are a collection of uh, books that are kind of tucked away um, on top of a, a dresser. Um, there's some other sort of art pieces and that in the room. Um, okay. You can't, you don't identify anything like, oh, all of the this is missing or anything like that. Okay, well, I mean, I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna keep, like, I'm gonna look, I'm still gonna, like, look through the house to see if there's any sign of her, but. Okay, going through everything in the house is, is quiet. You do walk past the, uh, the study room 
and then uh, father's office where you kind of half smirk to yourself a little bit at the uh, misplaced items from in there. Uh, again, it looked searched. The library or their like family library, I guess. The... <laughs> Sorry! The lock books, are they still there or is that cabinet still locked? Or... Um, going in, looking at it, it looks like the lock mechanism has been broken. Um, not like the whole thing, the whole thing hasn't like shattered because it was kind of like a glass case and there was a, a lock there, but it looks like the mechanism has been broken. Like it was attempted to be picked and that might've failed. So they just broke it and it has been open looking. Um, there are, if you recall, since you're so very much into libraries and books and all of that you recall that you think you remember that all the shelves were full and it looks now like there's maybe three or four books missing okay there's just some places where the books are kind of just like leaned over a little bit as there are gaps in the shelves are there any more missing like you i could probably spot a book missing from the shelf like <laughs> A mile away. <laughs> Make an investigation roll. That would be a 16. 16. Uh, looking around, um, there are a couple spots here and there where it looks like a book has been removed from the library, but um, nothing sticks out as any large chunks. Um, and you have seen... Through all of your wanderings through the house, you have seen books in various other rooms and such as well, just sort of like left on tables and that kind of thing. That's probably where they are. Okay. That's it. I'm not going to look through them. I have another library scene. I'm like... <laughs> all right. <laughs> so what would you all like to do? Do I know where Karut would be? Do you have any means by which to know that? Well, is there like a place where... Um, Friendship. Right, because he's, he's here. This isn't his home base. His home base is Vestal Law. Like, is there a place where people who got... Who are working for the Empire and got like... You know, like barracks or like a hangout the i mean the city has a huge set of barracks it's kind of built um in in the area remember we went to the the stadium for uh, bodron's march and all of that uh that area is sort of like the military quarter um and there are quite extensive barracks there it's actually um home to a large portion of um the general kind of infantry of chore it's where they do a lot of training and such. Chora being a, is a very centralized location um, to the Dracor Empire itself, so it's faster to kind of keep troops here and then deploy them elsewhere than keeping them at the um, outskirts. So, quite a large well, military presence. Is that where Bremeraldi Archmage is? Karut an Archmage? Uh, that is negative. Karut is. Um, here, let me look up. Um, Karut is an Arcanist. Okay, so is that is that military enough that he would be given a place in the barracks? Is there is a special potential. Arcanist place? Um, <laughs> is there any way for me to know this? There's you don't really know um where folks from Bromaraldi would stay in Chora per se, as you haven't kind of come across that or really thought about this until just now um you do know that like you said they're based out of vesular and you do know that the staff itself was going to vesular oh so he might not even be in the city anymore all right i will when i finish going through the house a little bit i will return to the foyer and go through the components for sending again just gonna burn straight through all my third level slots um, and I will cast Sending to Karut, and, uh, say, Sorry to bother you, 
seem to have misplaced my girlfriend, wondering if you have seen her, a little bit concerned about her well-being. Any help would be appreciated. And then he makes that face at the end. <laughs> Good to know. Um, you feel as though the message has sent. You wait a few moments and you hear Karut's voice. I have not seen her. A bit busy with other things. Good luck. Do I, ha do I have any idea where my brother would be either? Last, you know, uh, your brother basically denounced your family. Okay, but do I know like what entity he was working for at the time? Like... He was uh, part. The last you knew of his sort of affiliations, he was part of Bodrin's March, the tournament that sort of made its way across uh, the Decoran Empire, and he had won, which put him in good standing to the. Em the sort of empire elite at large and he was kind of a, in more or less a celebrity figure um how he has since leveraged that celebrity to make other collect connections uh you haven't really talked to him since then uh Got so it. it's likely he's still somewhere in chora um but mm -hmm. publicly distanced himself from the family Okay. Kendra, do you want to go see your dad? Um, I don't think they do here. They allow you to see people in custody here. I, mean, I don't know how things work in the Empire. Probably, but uh, I don't. Yes, I public think we have other things to do right now. Well, I know, but he... maybe. Well, I guess. Uh, okay. What? I don't know. Maybe he would have heard something, but I don't know. I guess that makes doesn't make sense how he would hear something. He's been in custody for a long time. I mean, I mean, if you think he might know something, we can go see him. If I want to see him purely, you know, to cuddle and see how he's going, um, maybe when he's out. Maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've you've seen me, Akira, but cuddling ain't quite my jam. All right. I'm not judging you. Yes, but here's this book. Cuddling is my jam <laughs> by Kendra. Oh, wait, I don't have that book in my bag. Wait, is that a thing? Hold on. No, not in here. The first edition. <laughs> so what would, you limited all, run. what would you all like to do? You've sort of spent about an hour or so scouring the Havel household. Um, I could just sound the horn in different parts of the city. Um, Roswell's kind of pacing while this is happening, but as we're coming to the end, like, not an end, but like, we've kind of gone through all these possible options. I'm like, hey, I don't... <sighs> we have a lot of <laughs> things to do right now, and I'm really concerned about the Rebecca Cool. <sighs> I don't want to belittle Siora's existence and seeing your fan, fan. I just, I feel like a monster about to eat people feels a little pressing. Um, oh, so that that is my. If we're taking votes for what we do next, that's my vote. I mean, it kind of goes along with. I mean, maybe she did go back to the listening post. Then. Yeah. Well. We should probably, as per the conversation of questionable in characterness that we had, um, which I'm just going to presume happened in character, um, we should probably approach the Empire anyway to get permission to go underground again. Maybe the Empire knows where she is. So we can, we can kill multiple birds with a single dagger. Good. Somebody should message Karut about that. Uh, Since we're going to talk to them. I don't think we have to necessarily go through Karut to speak with them, do we? 
He's no, not in charge anymore. He's the only actual Empire official we were aware of. Yeah, but they but told us if we had. Don't mention any. Happy. Um, <laughs> yeah. There, there were other officials there though that we did talk to. Yes, and we and have. Actually, actually, Nomaris, you very recently talked to uh, one of the uh, ministries. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, but the officials that might control us getting permission to go underground, like, have the authority to say, yeah, go ahead, not the, oh, I'll put this into a letter. I don't want that person. I want the, the go-ahead person. Well, I mean, I just, we have, a, we have a, a noble and we have uh, a respected paladin, a Peronius, surely, who's surely also what you, noble. Who's also, well, yes, but you're not a Dracor noble. Which I think is oh. a point in your favor, um, but one of you will probably have make more headway than and Kevin just like gestures at himself. <laughs> yes, clearly. Dressed in the armor of a uh, foreign power. <laughs> um, as a group, we can all go together and ask if we know where we're headed. Would anyone be like super mad at me if I stopped at the library? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like under 30 minutes. We're holding you to that. I don't think that's possible if you're If you're not done in 30 minutes, I am dragging you out by your tail. A tail? You just mentioned how lives are at stake. I know, but you agreed with Roswell and now you're thinking, "Oh, wait, Dewey Decimal." This kind of sounds like, "Oh, let's not use the staff." Oh, I'm going to force someone to use the staff. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight for the fucking jugular. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kira. I'm trying to find humor in this. Well, look, uh, if we if we need to go and find somebody to give us permission to go underground anyway, presumably we have to go into the center of the city so we can drop her off and pick her back up. We don't know who it is. Let's start at the actual elevator area. Whoever is guarding it would have to know at least who gives them permission. All right, let's do that. Okay, you've got a time limit, Akira. Okay, I'll be super fast. Okay, 30 seconds. You said so. <laughs> 30 minutes. I said 30 no, minutes. No, 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 you can't change it now. <laughs> I didn't change it. <laughs> All right, so leaving the Havel estate, you make your way um, into the Amberfields district, uh, which is where... Um, on the outskirts of that is um, the lift that goes down into the buried city beneath um, beneath Chores Street itself. Also in the Amberfields district is uh, the Illuminatory Architects, which is a very large library. Um, That's in a side of a tree. It is inside of a very large tree trunk. Can you allow me to retcon one little conversation? Yes. that may have happened before we left the state or i had fully meant to talk to roswell have, have roswell talk to her mom about what the vision was that night before and what her feelings about it were but if it's going to throw us totally off i respect that the seora thing kind of threw me sorry i should have i should have waited a second before we leaped into that that's okay you didn't know. I didn't uh, communicate. Um, so you, what you're asking is to go back and have a conversation about that. Well, maybe it's one of those things if, if Akira is going, actually, you know what? If Akira is going to the library, I'm also going to go and do the same thing. Okay. And, and then and the rest off. of the people are going to. Yeah. We're so that way timeline-wise we're out... not. Do, do, we, do we have actually have like, do, does any of us know enough about the structure of the Dracorian government to know who you would talk to about? bringing a formerly thought extinct race of elves back to the surface. Uh, you're <laughs> guessing that right? would likely yeah. be something that makes its way up to uh, the empire, the emperor level. Um, but there is, I mean, yeah. uh, Numerius kind of got the rundown on how the, the government itself works. There are various ministers for various things, uh, defense, interior, coin, um, all can that I, sort of stuff. Can I make a suggestion? Religion. Can I suggest that when we talk to these people, that we say that we had visions of people trapped below that were prisoners of Agthimon, and 
it's the truth it's just yeah. that and to be honest we don't fully know if the, like there's who those people are or what yeah, they are yeah we don't know what we're getting into so if we can at least gain entrance that way or if we get pressed we can talk about it but i yeah well, that's a that's a very good idea let's just let's start with the vaguest the vaguest version of this that we can do we have any idea who we could go to that feels like the top like what's the closest to the emperor himself we can get the, the emperor himself or, or or we could go to oh. the tactical officer can, can we just the talk to the emperor uh, well, is he, that a thing we can just do he he did say that we could go to him right yeah I mean, you can't literally just, like, walk into the palace and be like, hey, Emperor, let's chat. But you can schedule a meeting with him if you would like. All um, right, let's try to do that. And I mean, so, Kendra, you asked about uh, what you would know. So, usually if you, if there's a <laughs> the little stray cats of the city of Chora <laughs> just hopping all over tiny gnome paladin. Um Wait. We're delicious. We can't help it. Yeah. Um, damn tabaxi. Cannibalistic race. Um, so the the kind of highest uh, government officials that the general populace has access to, excuse me, um, is uh, the ministers themselves. And they typically have staff that works underneath them that hear concerns. But if concern is brought by, say, like, people that are already known to, like sort of allies to the empire such as uh, you guys then they can go just kind of direct up to the minister level and all of those at the the ministry level are um, those are the direct advisors to the emperor themselves and any of those any of them can bring forward issues uh, upon which to discuss and then um, most things are then verified by the entire committee and then the emperor gets the final say but usually it takes a convening of the entire kind of committee of ministries in order to make something happen lesser issues are just sort of just decided by the minister of uh whatever the particular um, area is so if like you had some question about like taxation or trade or something um the minister of coin would likely be able to offer action on that issue without you having to like you know take it all the way to the top right because not everything is like this huge matter of state and that's why the ministers are there to kind of take away the minutia of running the empire from the emperor himself so the uh the distance between the glistening pools no longer listen uh, and the um the disney theme park version of the tower that that you know so what's the di yeah what's the what's the physical like i don't mean straight lines in through how, rock and whatnot but yeah, how long yeah. would it take using the existing known paths we've we've already Walk. You're guessing probably like starting at the top of the lift going down. Um, it would probably take about two, two and a half days to get there. Um, oh, so it's unless further. unless you I mean, you could move at a faster pace and lessen that time um, substantially. But to go at a safe pace, because um, it was only a, a matter of hours to ascend the elevator, right? Yeah, the uh, elevator itself is a few hours. And then how far is the elevator from the uh, diorama town? Uh, it's probably about another hour or so down the way. And then to get and, through to get through the uh, City of Forgotten Elves is um, another few hours. And then you're sort of into those uh, tunnels that go to the border of the Decoran territory in the Underdark. Um, and then that's when it sort of turns into the wild Underdark. And then you kind of go around. And you only and it, know the way that you have gone before. Right. So at, at following the same path, it's still another day or so. Yeah. Or, or even more past that, right? Correct. Okay, because uh, that area is currently under uh, kind of a high alert based on the fact that the, 
the drow showed up. So if we could convince that uh, that specific faction that we need to secure these pools based on also imminent threat or possible imminent threat, um, then that might be a good way to get permission as well as uh, either escort or assistance. I think I think we should go out as that we're going down there for both reasons that we can help clear out any drow that are in the tunnels, and right to identify further yeah. threats and, and deal with whatever has to be dealt with. Did we originally run into the drow in between the pools and it was only on the other side of the pools, right, the far side? Correct. Because the first time you went in, you went in a way that was very much not connected to the city. Or the, the underground city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, some of you head off um, to the administrative buildings. The Amberfields District uh, dropping Akira off first at the Illuminatory Architects which is um, a mighty, mighty tree, ancient in nature, that's wood has been all but petrified over the years. And the interior of it is this huge hollowed out column uh, out of which bookshelves and hallways have been carved. And it's about, probably about seven or eight stories tall, with just sort of winding staircases and a sort of large open central area um the top has been kind of uh hatched over with various sort of uh, graded metal and from that on long chains hanging at various levels are just a collection of lanterns that cast light upon all of the different levels of this and down at the bottom there is kind of a large in the um the area where the roots kind of spread out some of that has been dug out so the roots kind of form this natural canopy under the bottom part and so there's lots of reading areas and tables set up there um, where people can take these books and go and then sort of spills out onto the main concourse of this so um, we will deal with that first as that will happen first and then Roswell you're going back to sanctuary to talk to your parents uh, or just your mom um, so we will deal with that second, and then we'll get to the ministry stuff afterwards. So you arrive in the library. You can see as you kind of uh, crest the threshold in, um, a couple of like the library attendants kind of look up, and then they all sort of like um, look back and kind of like catch each other's eyes <laughs> as this brief, brief moment of terror and panic comes through. <laughs> I'll go straight for them. Okay. <laughs> and they're like, hi. Uh, yes, I am in a hurry. I'm on a time limit. I only have 30 minutes. I need the Empire section. I am specifically looking for Empire the past section. three. <laughs> the past three uh, emperors <laughs> and the present emperor. I'd like um, uh, to know where that section is. Please hurry quick. Thanks. Um, well, there are many books on the empire and the emperors themselves uh, makes up a great deal of the library um the first two floors are um all on the history of the empire and a collection there um perhaps uh that would be a good place to start if you're looking for the emperors in particular it's probably on the eastern facing wall of the second tier uh what about the the present emperor, um, where exactly is that? So I can start there. Uh, he would be located in the anthology of the emperors themselves in the history, though, uh, as you know, his book is not uh, fully written. Um, mm -hmm. The early years. <laughs> yes. Um, if you're also interested, there is a, a collection of chronicling of events of news and uh, recent happenings which could contain information up to the present if you're looking for um things that may have not had time to be chronicled into tomes themselves uh yes i'd like that book and oh it's not a book that's uh probably 
several hundreds of thousands of scrolls. They chronicle the events of the city from various news and media sources. Okay, you're taking up a lot of my time. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> I'm just <laughs> going to go up to the, where she said the, the section was. And I'm going to look myself uh, for, I want the most present uh, emperor, the current pre uh, emperor information first. Specifically, I'm looking for how he became emperor and succession um, of emperors. Oh. So, um, make an investigation roll for me as you head up to the right section. And you notice that there is not like a book on emperors. There are like shelves of books on each emperor it is very much a uh um all the fight because i'm in a hurry <laughs> all right so uh going in there are lots of books on um emperors and you uh go in and uh, sort of reach in you pull out a uh a book um that's uh seems to be on Alder Dracora, who is the third emperor of Chora, um, served a 32-year term from the years 862 to 904. Um, sort of skimming through, they were um, more of naval interest than most of the other uh, emperors, and as such sought to explore um, up and down the western coasts of Dolan, um, also named for, or known for naming two of the larger islands off the western, western coast, um, Lenza and Tania, after his two daughters. And sailing south was the first uh, emperor to command the discovery of um, southernmost regions, leading to a uh, connection to the city of Nazrael for the first time. He's also known as the emperor who began political relations with Clem Avar and uh, moved towards allyship uh, there. That was all the third emperor. Yes. And so his term ended 104 years ago. Okay. Second? Second what? I don't know. That's all the information I got? What, you just ran minutes. you just randomly pulled out a book <laughs> okay uh I want to look for something more specific to this emperor and how he became emperor. all right give me another investigation yes. roll. Roll again. Uh, hey, Nate! <laughs> I've got I have so much information now that I can um um so uh going sort of uh following the logistics through this uh you do learn kind of now taking a step back and observing all of this that there have been nine emperors uh over the history of the decoran empire uh the current emperor being the ninth you just read about the third um the empire itself has been around for 262 years uh starting in the year um 782 uh and Going around, you do uh, sort of find the section on the fourth emperor, which is next. Do you wish to stop there? Are you trying to find... Um... Uh, more recent. All right. So uh, walking nearly halfway around the inside of the trunk itself, uh, you come to a section on the seventh emperor. And that seems to be the end of this section before you kind of start going into other sections. Um, and so... You pull out a book there. Uh, the seventh uh, emperor uh, was Dacian Dracora. His term was from 970 to 977, serving as seven years in his term, uh, which is the shortest of any of the emperor emperors. Um, primarily known for his most prolific failure in the Dracoran military, um, as he was the one who engaged in the bloody five-year war, attempted invasion of Eridor, which was a total and complete failure, resulting in astronomical loss of life in that. Uh, Dacian was executed for his failures uh, by high-ranking uh, military officials, and um, those officials placed his younger brother, Bonavas, as uh, in charge as emperor in his stead. Cool. Hmm. Being the eighth emperor... Okay. So you, um, <laughs> you, 
just sort of from reading these and, and how succession works and how there was a question of succession in all of that, you do you do glean the fact that the emperorship is a mostly passed down in families, usually to um, uh, either a next of kin or uh, in the case of actually having a legitimate heir, it's passed down to the legitimate heir. And it does mention that there is one exception to this in the history, but it does not say exactly what it is. It just sort of is written as if it assumes that you know that already. Because you're a good citizen of the empire and you know your history. But you don't actually know because you're not a good citizen of the empire. Or a citizen at all. <laughs> all right, so... Um, we will say that 20 minutes have passed. What would you like to do? No! Not yet. <laughs> Library sweep is over. No! It's, I have 10 more minutes. And I want to know how this emperor became emperor. That's my number one goal. This current emperor? Yes. All right. Uh, give me one more roll. Um, and we'll see what we get. All right, so um, going through, uh, you kind of go back and to the beginning and then, and you, you can see like from for the people sitting down sort of in the reading level, they just see this dragonborn just like running back, like the tail going and the golden scales catching the light and like pulling books out and just sort of like freaking out at them and putting them back and running. And all of the, all of the attendants are now kind of just like lined up in a line, just sort of like looking back and forth <laughs> as you go as you kind of chirped off their help um so none of them want to approach you in your lunacy as you investigate very quickly um so going through you do find uh, a section sort of on more recent history and you find uh a uh, a book on the beginning of stan more dracora's uh uh, term. Um, he's currently 36 years into his term, which started the year 1008. Uh, his age is 57 years old. Um, and he was the first non-soldier em emperor. Um, uh, scholarly, but practical. And uh, sort of the quote written on the front of the book is, I'm not a student. Uh, I'm a student of war. Not. Uh, I'm a student of war, just not a participant. Um, and he is a noted tactician and historian. Uh just leafing through the book, other notable accomplishments, founded the Unity Temple in the year 1016 to bring a more um, equalized ability for li religious consultation for the emperor himself and its people. Um, he is sort of characterized in the public eye as uh, placing the same trust in his generals as he does in uh, the scholars and engineers of the city and charges all of them with the betterment of the empire through combat or innovation. Uh, he's inv invested large amounts of the empire's considerable treasury into infrastructure in the cities, both here and throughout the empire. And uh, this decision was hugely against popular opinion at the time. However, um, it was made early in his term and is now currently reaping benefits almost tenfold on the investment, um, sort of returning on that. So originally not super liked, but now very well liked as it goes. Uh, he became emperor when um uh bonavas dracora the previous empire um died uh he was the one of the sons of bonavas and bonavas was poisoned by a servant uh during a short-lived rebellion attempt um earlier it doesn't go into any any specific depth into that but there was apparently a short-lived sort of rebellion group that was eventually quelled um who managed to assassinate the uh emperor himself however you don't know how or why um in that uh you also uh know uh just going through that um according to this uh stan mordor has married four times uh, typically to much younger br younger brides First died um, at sea, making passage to the Isles of Osinara. The ship sank. Uh, the second was convicted of adultery, cheating on Stanmore with a dignitary from Ibeline. Um, it is unclear if she's dead or not, just no longer his wife. Uh, the third was abducted and eventually assassinated by what is believed to be the Shadow's Oath, though that was never proven. Um, and the fourth was... Um, there's a, a little, like, scroll that's... Uh, 
uh, been tucked in. Um, the fourth was assassinated by Valatha Havlum. Just sort of like a footnote there. Scratch. No biggie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so the second one, um, adultery. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First died at sea. Okay. Interesting. Oh my god. All right. Um, <laughs> this is. You've only scratched the tip of the iceberg of what I have. But now I'm like. You're at 30 I minutes. I want to know about this rebellion group. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes have expired. All right. These people are gonna have to come get me. You can, you can, you can choose. You can choose to keep going, but we'll go to another, another so, thread, and you can collect so yourself it, and I'll your emotions. With, I'll leave it with I cannot leave without knowing about this rebellion group. So that's what I'm now looking. I for. can't wait for Demarius to have to drag Akira, who is easily twice his height, out of the library, kicking and screaming. All right. So, uh, returning now to. Um, Oh, I think I might have just messed up the video. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, returning to the sanctuary, Roswell. Yes. Uh, I would like to uh, find my parents. I will knock on the door to their room several times. <laughs> yeah. Um, your mother uh, comes and answers the door. Um, yes, Roswell. Hey. So, um, do y'all have time to talk? Uh, of of course, yes. Um, do you, do you come in? Okay. So, um, do you, is is Dad in there too? It's okay if he is. I don't need to talk to you alone. Just. Um. Uh, yes, he is here. Of course. Okay. Okay. How did the? Okay. So, um. Uh, remember how you said there was still people down below? Uh. Yeah. It was we yesterday. Have, yeah, we had a, you know, Akira did some scrying on the listening pools and saw some people down there, along with a beast. A beast, you say? Yeah. So last time, the first time we saw Agthimon, he had this beast, like a weird, not, not quite like a pet, but I mean a lackey, a lackey, if you will, and he um, might be like her, like like e um preying on the Rerocool right now in their weakened state. Um so you were saying if they're down there they are potentially in danger? Yes. And um I recognize that there's lots of weird ramifications of bringing them back up, but I feel like I want to do this with your input, but their safety is is top concern right now. Uh, well, um, they're likely at least uh, disoriented. I mean, we were all in the temple, so to appear now in the listening pools, that's perhaps jarring. And um, as I think you and some of your friends might have felt, uh, Agthumon was keen on slowly pulling thoughts and memories from heads, so they've been in his clutches for quite some time, so they may not even have a uh, command of their mental faculties. Oh, that's, that's not good. I mean, one part of that is a little good. The, so this is what I want to get at. So we need to ask for the Empire to let us to go back down in. Because right now they're controlling the shortest entrance to the listening pools that we know of and if we were to save them we would can't really leave them down there because right now that's drow territory and I'm not sure what they would do so we would the option is to bring them back up I want to ensure that our people are safe and able to live in a place where they can be restored and healed. And I know that toward the end, the relationship with the, the Empire and the Rebukul is not good. So, do you see what I'm trying to grapple with here? Well, 
I would say the immediate issue is the danger for physical harm from whatever creature is down there, or even the drought, perhaps. Um, uh, they are likely not able to protect themselves. They'll at the very least be weakened by whatever whatever Agthumon had wanted to do with them. Um, and at worst, perhaps, simply like uh, young children, really. So, maybe we can deal with the pieces about, you know, where they would live, how they'd be cared for later on. But right now, I guess I just want to know it's okay that and I don't know if Karut said anything about you being, or us being Rira Cool, but we kind of, the Empire's the only way right now, or the quickest way to get down there. And I just want you to be okay with that and know that we have your best interests in mind once we get them out. And I know that's so hard, especially after just what happened, you know, yesterday. But I don't want you to think that I'm betraying us, I guess. And if I am not all right with that course of action, you're going to do it anyway, I presume. Or find me another way to get down there, I guess. I've been like, on the wrong side of this puzzle for a very long time. I think we can negotiate something afterwards that will be good. Or at I, least I hope. The Emperor did say he owed us. I I worry that your um perhaps leading lambs to the slaughter. The mm. Ryuko or the lambs, right, in this scenario? Yes. Yes, okay. Roswell. Okay. How, how long has it been since the conflict? Since the war? Yeah. Uh, several hundred years. Okay. So, I mean, the Empire's already won. <laughs> it's a matter of finding a... Well, a, it's, we want to find a way to have them well they're going to see how weak everybody is right now they're not going to be a threat so if we can find you know a sovereign country or something where you can live I don't know do you trust the emperor I think when we're looking at this scale of power right now the Rebacor are not a threat. And I think he's a very calculating person with logic that I don't possess. However, it's not like we're bringing out the drow, for example, to come above. That you know. would be terrifying, yes. Yeah, we can only handle one at a time. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if... I worry more not that people themselves will be viewed as dangerous, but the Empire is founded on the idea that it has become sole conqueror of the territory that it has taken. Um, if you do something to upset that idea, you're challenging the very nature of the Empire itself. There are likely those in the Empire who will not take well to that idea. Nationalism is a powerful motivator, Roswell. I know. But their safety is a huge concern. And time, I feel like time is of the essence, and I don't know a better way out. 
we can try and negotiate a better way after. And right now the empire, as long as I've known it my whole life, has been a time of safety and peace. So hopefully we can neg we can negotiate something. There's not that many people down there, are there? I I don't know. Um, I have no idea how many people survived or how many are, are lingering. Uh, I I'm sorry, Roswell. I wish I wish I could be more help in all of this, and I. I don't well, trust the Emperor, I don't trust the Empire, but I do trust you. That's, that's enough for me in this, but this is, this is the fate of all of the Rakul, all of my people, all of your people. It hangs in the balance. And I need you to know I'm going to fight for that. Just make sure you pick the right battle. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I'm not hugging that idea. I'm just like, decisions are hard. And that's just what I'm getting at is... Perhaps uh, look to your faith. I was going to do that. He wanted to ask a few questions of Istis, and I didn't know if you wanted to be a part of it with me. So, um, I'm sorry, Roswell. I'm, I'm glad it's helped you find purpose and meaning, but it is not, um, it's not, it's not my way. It's not, um, our way, really. Oh no. Why did you drop me off somewhere that's not our way? Wait a minute. What do you worship? Do you worship? What do we worship? What do we do? Oh my god, do I have to give up everything now? Uh, no, Roswell, it's it's fine that you you have you have that which uh, distinguishes you, that which uh, you're able to find meaning with that's in important for anybody. But um Oh, can't hear ya. I've got the background music. Can can you hear me? Yes. I can hear your microphone moving. Hello? Yes. All right. For some reason, my Yeti died. Wait, and my video died. Now my video's back. Is all the video in the wrong spot? Oh my God, I'm Nomarius now. Oh, wait. That's great. Yay, we did it. We're good? Okay. Yes. All right. So, Mom, as you were saying, what do you believe in? Um... Well, um, it's not the gods that really control things. The world is already forged. They are, unfortunately, merely just citizens of this world that has been created like any of us. Um, perhaps on a different scale of being, of course, but... Um, still at the mercy of the elements themselves and still no less impervious to the end than any of us. You are super confusing right now. I mean, I get it. I'm just trying to grapple with like, uh, how do I integrate with... Okay, it's all right. I don't. I won't make you like pray, pray with me. But I kind of like sew during it. That's like a thing we can do, right? Um, do you know how to sew? Oh my god, I can teach you so much. I've never 
been much of a seamstress, no. Oh my god, we're gonna have so much fun. I mean, like, like later, like, you know, when we're all done with this stuff and, like, you know, we can, like, sit by a fire and drink some wine and, like, sew stuff. It'll be great. Dad can do it, too. Right? Oh, yes, that sounds, um, well, quite, quite, yes. Sewing. I mean, wine. Think, wine. Think about Yes, the, wine, of course. Yeah. Yes. Think about all the old archaeological symbols that we could do together, like uh, in tapestries. Oh, yes. I once saw this wonderful tapestry. It was in a temple, uh, probably I about. <laughs> I start ritual casting commune. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all during your ritual cast, he continues to. Um, go on. <laughs> go on and on about the temple he saw and the tapestries in it and their depictions of various holy symbols etc etc as you cast commune you contact your deity or a divine proximity and ask up to three questions that can be answered with a yes or no uh you must ask your questions before the spell ends which is one minute you have one minute to ask your questions yes um, and you receive a correct answer who cut your hair? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Okay, so my first question is: so yes, yeah, she pulls out her sewing threads and you know starts to, you know, do a different pattern. Um, the elements are kind of a focus still with this, you know, uh, the four elements. Um, so her first question is, if we say the Rira Cool in the listening pools, are they able to be restored? Yes. Okay. Uh, is Siora shielding and warding herself? No. Okay. Is Torrin's reach expanding beyond Eridor currently? Yes. Okay. Um finish and it's not bad probably you know and I give it to my mom oh um, it's it's lovely Roswell you're what? not just humoring me are you it's really pretty what what do I do with it it's a handkerchief oh yeah I mean it's okay I mean, like, I sew a lot. I mean, like, I'll sew on anything, really. So don't you don't need to be dainty about it, but it's, like, pretty. She kind of folds it up and sticks it into her pouch. Do a death-saving throw on your pen. <laughs> it died! Shame there's no recording of this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I... I finish and I, you know, take my mother's hands and I look in her eyes and I'm like, I think you can trust me. I want you to believe you can trust me. Um, I will fight for you, for us, but I need you to know that there may be, need to be some compromise, but we will find the best way forward. Life is always filled with compromise, Roswell. Um, and you can only do what you believe is right in the moment. But be cautious, as what is right in the moment may not be right when you look back on it. Yeah, I think I learned that the hard way yesterday. Okay. I, like hug her way too hard you know she hugs you back yeah not quite as aggressively yeah i go over and give my dad a kiss on the forehead because he's just a little bit shorter than me um and i head out to meet my party all right those of you at the ministry So, Tebrin, Nomarius, and Kindra, what would you like to be doing? I am going to let the two... Well, I'm going to let the Dracoran and the Noble 
uh, <laughs> start this process. But so for the moment, is the noble. Uh, for the moment, Tabern is going to be hanging towards the back. Uh, so is there like, is there like a reception, or do we go to the minister? Or okay, I'm gonna. So there, there is, there is sort of like a main desk that has several people working at it, and kind of like a large reception area. Back behind it, there are several flights of stairs, kind of going up, and there's hallways with different offices. It's all a kind of very large, sprawling building. Um, you've been in here probably like once or twice before in your life, um, just along with your parents to do whatever official business and that sort of thing. Okay, I'll uh, go up to the desk. <laughs> uh, a man with sort of um, very small kind of rectangular spectacles um, looks up as he's been uh, reading, has a, a quill still in his hand, um, glasses kind of perched on the edge of his nose as he kind of wiggles them up a little bit higher and then kind of peers down his nose at you. Yes? Oh, hello. Uh, we're looking to make a appointment? Is appointment the right word? With the, with the emperor. <laughs> um, yes, I know. Scar, scar. Um, <laughs> he'll know who we are by name. I'm Kendra Havel. This is Havel? Yes. He kind of like leans back. Like... <laughs> Don't worry, she doesn't bite. Yes, she uh, does. This one bites, though. I say, this is... <laughs> before you get Nemarius. <laughs> this is Sir Nemarius Crace. Uh, I'm Tabern Healers. Mm. Oh, all right. Um, well, um, that's right. The Nemarius. That's right. And uh, what is the matter upon which you wish to meet? Um, leftovers. I can't go into too much detail with you, obviously, but. If you tell him that it's leftovers of our previous excursion, he will understand more or less the subject matter. So we wishing have... to meet with the emperor, and he's sort of jotting this down leftovers. about leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> I, be I believe what Kindra is trying to get across uh, is that some concerns have been raised to us about... Uh, certain parties um regarding our previous mission that we talk around it talk around we it we ran under his uh under his auspices so you have previous work with the emperor that you wish to discuss further yeah yes. no nope, that's too neat leftovers <laughs> um leftover is... work that you previously it... discussed with the emperor it is quite pressing Quite pressing leftovers. Depressing. Oh. All right. Um, well, I'll run this up the chain, and uh, where can I r reach you? We're always reachable through the Brynhild Sanctuary. Uh, ideally, this would be something that gets run up the chain sooner rather than later. All right. Uh, I will... Um... Submit it up, and uh, if you had to say, is this a matter of um, a matter of uh, civil or military affairs? Military, and the longer we leave it, the more it ed edges towards life or death. We will uh, place it inches, in the mortal danger in the Not mortal edges. danger file and uh, seek to accelerate this. Um, the Emperor is a very busy man, and um, he will be with you as soon as he can. We appreciate your uh, stopping by and participating in the process. And then he sort of like fills something out and hands it to you. Um, and it has Ash. it has a number on it, um, three hundred and ninety-four. Out of curiosity. I yes. forgot my shit. I forgot my brother's name. Um, Alfred. Alfred. Alfred it's Alfred. Uh, what do you happen to know at all where Auburn Havel would be? Uh, Auburn Havel. Um, well, I think he uh, was uh, definitely uh, well, <laughs> not around your house anymore. I'm guessing from what I've heard. Uh, um. Um, 
I do believe that he's, um, I, I heard rumors that he was, uh, investing in real estate, uh, out by the waterfront in Besaith. Um, it's a good choice. Uh, my cousin lives out there. Um. Okay, uh, thank you very and, much. And, um, do you have any idea where, uh, Archmages from the, uh, or Arcanists from the Bermeraldi school would be housed at the moment if um, they found themselves in Chora. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this man knows nothing! He rolls a five on his check. Um, the, uh, Bermeraldi school, uh, well, uh, they're they're all magicians, as as far as I know, and um, there is a a similar school, I believe, in Chor itself that does uh, pay uh, um, a bit. Um, they're the ones with the. Uh, have you ever attended one of those party magic? Uh, I did one once myself. It's. It's great. You can learn. Um, they do have a potion making class. And it's 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 quite good. I'd imagine that stay there. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Wonderful, and uh, we will send somebody to fetch you uh, as uh, soon as they are available. Just so. It never turns and walks out. All right. Shouldn't we just sit here and wait for the emperor? I <laughs> That's a joke. Let's go. Um, oh, all right. Um, you said that there were barracks. I would like to go talk around the barracks a little bit. All right. Uh, it's probably a five minute walk or so out in that direction. And I would like to see if I can turn up anybody who knows where Karut or Afi is. Turn up. All right. Um, so going around, you do see area where it is sort of barracks and just housing. Are you just going to, like, walk into the military housing? Or are you trying to find some... Um, I don't think I want to go into the housing. That feels like a weird... Feels like a weird thing to do. Um... If I can catch somebody who looks like they are, like, off-duty military. Almost everybody you see, once you kind of get up here, looks that way. All right, then uh, I would just, I just want to talk around a little bit then. Mm. And it's not something I need to RP, just, like, mm. talk around, see if I can dig up, describe Give them. Give me a charisma them. investigation roll. This I will do. That would be... Charisma investigation... <gasps> would be 1d20 plus 5 plus 8 because I'm proficient in it so that's 5 to 8 17 alright um, asking around the the Bremeraldi uh, um, folks the mages there is a uh, of, there are barracks for um, sort of the other side of the spectrum, the war mage side, but uh, in terms of abjuration and divination, uh, they usually, if they stay, they're staying in inns and taverns and not for that long. They do frequent um, use of teleportation circles and all of that. And you get the general impression that... Um, Folks, folks think they're kind of uh, they like their cushy uh, set of, sets of books and the ability to be close to all of the things they need. So they tend to not stay away from home any longer as they have to, and they just kind of get put up uh, wherever. Nerds. <laughs> the dang nerds. Okay, so was I given to? Was I? Pointed in the direction of any place that was popular for them. Did the, my descriptions of Karut or Affy? They didn't seem to know Karut or Affy. Um, they 
pointed you in a way towards um, where the uh, Aureus Legionnaires are um, put up, um, sort of a separate barracks, uh, okay. kind of on sort of the far end of all of this. But uh, beyond that, they didn't say anything, particularly about Bremeraldi folks. Okay, then I, mean, I guess I'll just go and I will repeat this process at, at the secondary location. All right, uh, give me another charisma investigation roll. Natural 20 plus 8, 28. Right. They appear before me, <laughs> bodily. Um, Unless so, it was a 30 DC. So asking around the... Um, it, it's a bit quieter in this section. Um, however, you do um, walk past somebody who seems fairly high-ranking in that like when they when they walk through groups and stuff, people like kind of like part and not like go to attention, but just kind of go um, and they turn out uh, to be fairly high uh, in sort of the officer class uh, war mage um, from, um, uh, from the Aureus Academy and listening to your questions, they, um, they say that there are um, there are operations that are ongoing. However, he doesn't know of um, any um, any members of Bremeraldi currently staying in the city. Um, although some maybe were there passing some that through. just left. Uh, you very quickly run into the firewall of. Um, classified not talking about uh military yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, efforts um uh, all right oh, i must have just missed them then um thank you very much for your time i will give him a military salute the omniscient narrator salutes you back and um <laughs> fuck one of the many moments where I'm like, gosh, we really haven't made any friends, have we? <laughs> nope. All right. I'm your friend. So about 30 minutes have passed on all fronts. What would everyone like to do? This uh, is bad. I was... go t to meet up. Where are you headed? The <laughs> ministry? Yeah. All right. Akira is in the library. <laughs> Akira has a passion for books, but she would never let it interfere with the lives at stake that we are trying to save. Are you guys going so to the library? We shall go find uh, Akira, no doubt, at the front of the library, already exited. All right. Yes, we'll go to the library. And we'll say, Roswell, for the sake of simplicity, that you go to the library. You'll... Yeah. I... You, you very quickly, um, upon we'll just sort of arriving in that... In. In that uh, yeah, arriving in that area, you do see the rest of your party as they're pretty hard to miss um, amidst the city. Akira, what would you like to do, knowing your time has come up? I appreciate the silence in the library, but you are muted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I <laughs> am frantically looking, trying to be very, very fast. Looking now for this information about um, the the rebellious group that that um, assassinated that one emperor guy. Oh no! The one that poisoned. <laughs> um, also, just as like a, a general, like this is what Tepper is going to be doing. Tepper is going to wait five minutes, and then Tepper is going to go into the library and look for a cure. <laughs> All right, uh, I need an investigation roll and a perception roll. Have faith. She'll be out. 14! 14, all right. Can I use my inspiration? Yeah. What is it, a, a d6? Uh, no, it just gives you advantage. Nice. Yeah. Oh. oh, so I just roll again. Yeah. All right, 14. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so looking around, um, 
you kind of having the name of the emperor that was um, poisoned during this rebellion, you go back and sort of uh, dig up their book and you are able to kind of um, find a little bit more into this. Um, uh, uh, Bavonis was, uh, from what you can read, viewed in the public eye as uh, weak and unfit to rule generally. Um, this was a result of he had uh, isolationist and kind of pacifist tendencies. Um, <laughs> Those and, damn pacifists. And you, you get the They're sense the um, there, there's sort of a, a subtext from the author that uh, these tendencies were likely created as a fear from suffering the same fate as his brother. But it does not go specifically into um, into what that specifically was. Um, you do know that this is the eighth emperor. Um, and you do know that the seventh emperor, um, his brother, uh, was executed for his failure in military endeavors. Um, so you can kind of put those pieces together. Um, however, uh, despite his attitude, uh, he had the support of the council behind him and enough political acumen, uh, in misdirection and sort of giving the public distractions and indulgences that he, uh, was able to remain in power, um, for his term of 31 years before he was, um, poisoned by the rebellion itself. Um, doesn't go into too much depth on what the actual nature of the rebellion is. Um, it was uh, basically crushed and put down, and it was generally um, an uprising of people who did not like the direction that the Empire was going, um, who disagreed with sort of um, the isolationism and pacifism. I presume it's been longer than five minutes. Yes, it has. I'm going to go inside. Do I see her immediately? Um, you don't see her right out of um, the bat, but as you guys sort of are viewed standing outside, one of the attendants just sort of like walks by and kind of just points up, <laughs> having seen some of you guys together uh, previously, right. um, and points up. And you can see up <laughs> on the third the third level, um, sort of book out in hand, you see a golden tail sort of wagging back and forth very happily. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I am going to quietly, one might even go so far as to stay stealthily, uh, I'm going to begin the the approach and this is how akira dies i would like to make and this is called backstab this this music is perfect for this for some reason <laughs> mm -hmm. let me see we do like this one. oh i've lost the music right. again my stealth roll is a 22 holy shit all right i only rolled a seven tabard's not even trying and he's good it wouldn't matter i'm like too into it yeah <laughs> all right and i so you sort of dart up, uh, sneaking your way up through, um, pretty nimbly moving through. You're like every librarian's favorite gift to silence. What would you like to do with your and what? Self where role? where is Akira right now? What exactly is she doing? She's reading a book. Uh, she's sort of standing by a bookshelf up on the sort of third tier up, and there's you can see up through the center of this. There's just there's sort of railings, and then the center is open, and then there's books and stuff and you can see she's she's not like right on the balcony edge there's there are little like kind of uh cubby holes that are carved in that have another five or six feet of winding kind of bookcase and she's sort of right on the corner of one of those next to the main concourse just tail flipping back and forth as as people right. have kind of like moved away from her um, are there like books just like scattered on the floor yeah as as you get there there is there's a little bit of a trail where you can see her <laughs> Her reign of terror has uh, sort of tornadoed its way through uh, here. I am going to, like, and, like, Tepper's just, like, looking around, just, like, carefully, like, stepping over the books. And then he comes up, like, kind of behind in, like, her blind spot all the way around. And then he just reaches out and grabs her tail. <laughs> all right. That's a weapon. So, yeah, ta tail in hand, you, you all of a sudden just feel this little tug, Akira. And he doesn't—he doesn't like do it hard enough to hurt, but like he is deaf. He's like, <laughs> let's try this on my cat and see what happens. 
<laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> she didn't like it. It has been more than 30 minutes. Oh, just five more minutes. This is just... I, I, I found this information about the, the emperor, and, and he had four, four, four wives, and... um. Lots of people have lots of wives. It's more interesting if he had all four at the same time, but I'm not sure what any of- I'm I'm just- I'm not seeing the relevance. Well, okay, well, how about this? There was this rebellion group that they- they poisoned the emperor before him. It was his, uh, his- his dad? I think it was his dad. Yeah, it was his dad, and, um, they didn't like the way that the empire was going, but he didn't really do anything. He was just, you know, he was kind of passive and, and stuff. That but may have been the issue. This, there was this rebellious group, and they poisoned him. They poisoned it happens from time to time. Yes, but it's interesting. Many and things are interesting. <laughs> I hope they're no, coming out soon. Or an echo through the library. <laughs> Everyone in the library just sort of like turns in unison. <laughs> I never entered the library, but I definitely blew it into the library. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're all looking sort of out towards you. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Let me just put my books back. I'll just put them back. Oh, look. <sighs> Academics. I let go of her tail. <laughs> I'll put away my books nice and neatly and reluctantly leave the library. I walk behind her the entire way just to make sure she doesn't, in a moment of weakness, turn back. All right, and they do. You do kind of um, get very, get very prying eyes uh, from the attendants. Um, but once they're satisfied that you're not trying to uh, smuggle books out of the library, uh, some of them quickly scurry up, up to the level that you were at, and start um, sort of looking at books and you see one of them like look up put one back pick up another one look at it and be like and look at the other one like this and then like they point like all the way to the other side of the library and one of them sort of starts running all the way around back to put it back i um, I, I mouth sorry at whatever the le- the attendant is that's like still up front <laughs> i'm just gonna give like a a friendly wave see you later <laughs> i'll be back <laughs> i will be back and just chivy Akira the rest of the way out to meet the rest of the party. All right. So, party reconvened. So, we're, like, going down, right? Like We're fucked. No. We, we're fucked is what we are. I'm sorry, what? what, what, what? We are fucked. Stop with the vulgarity. No. There are, there are some obstacles. There is some bureaucracy. To... I have... So, I mean, I can try to ask around and see if there's someone who's a little, who can maybe be encouraged, but... Wait, what? Huh? Um, the fact of the matter is that we haven't made a great, num- a great many friends, and while it's possible that Karut or Afi could have pushed this through a little bit more, I think they're out of the city. So, and Tevern pulls the slip of paper that says 394 on out from, 394 on it out from the, the back of his belt and just like hands it to Roswell. For those who haven't seen, I've represented that with a gift in our... What? Yeah, I saw it. Out of, out of what's the, what's the, ne- what's the number they're dealing with now? I don't know, but I suspect it's a long way down the list. Well, why don't we just wait? Why don't we, we just do go it? down? Because... We've got all this goodwill that we've created, and we should probably not push our luck and lose the one ally we've sort of started creating. We haven't made very many friends, so let's not start shitting on the doorstep of, you know. The elevator, as well as the uh, locations it leads to, are currently a restricted area. So if we were to go down without some sort of official uh, permission, then we would be probably treated, and rightly so, as invaders. Not to mention the fact that uh, if the Emperor isn't feeling particularly forgiving, we would then be on one end, we would have the local drow, and on the other hand, we would have some very angry Empire types. Neither of those ends particularly well for us. Want to know some good information, though? 
I when I was researching, I was researching about the empire itself and the emperors, and this empire emperor is not from the military. He doesn't have a military background. He is a historian and a scholar. Garrett, do you have that that scrying focus that you used? Uh, yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> so when you've been scrying, you were using yes. something worth a thousand gold to do so? I don't know. Does it use it? Every it, does, it doesn't consume it. You just need to have it. It doesn't consume it. Okay, yeah, I have it. I always have it. Okay. Can I borrow it? Of course you can, Roswell. I'm not going to ruin it. Don't no, worry. I, I, pro I don't. No, I trust you. All right. Here you go. Okay. Should we maybe not do but, this in the town yeah, square? That, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's what I was going to suggest if we could go somewhere. Oh, kinda... well, then can I? Not that I don't trust you. It's just that <laughs> it's really important to me. I promise I'll let you use it. Okay. Okay. Under supervision. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it. You can see it. <laughs> so where are you all headed? I happen to know an empty mansion not too far from here. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> and on the way, I can tell you all about the Empire and what I've learned. I would like to fast forward to the mansion. <laughs> yeah. All right. Did you happen to read anything about the Rerequel when you were in there? I only had 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of went over my limit. Cool. All right. So, <laughs> so you end up uh, back at Kendra's house after, uh, surprisingly, uh, Akira seems to do the entire uh, walk over there on one breath as she just exhales information <laughs> about Emperor's and the Decor Empire, and you're pretty sure there's there's several things in there that don't have anything to do with emperors or the empire. Like, she read some book that was just like, this is like chronicles of things that meerkats do. And it's just <laughs> like a couple of random like animal facts in there that you're just like, I don't think that has anything to do with it, but it's just like assimilated into the stream of consciousness. So you looked up fabric dye because the one emperor had a yellow glove? Wait. <laughs> What Once is I put my mind to something, you know, you just can't stop it. I don't get what Quokos have to, anything to do with this. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. in there, though. Okay. <laughs> all right. So back at the Havel Estates, uh, you all sort of set up uh, in the study. What would you like to do? Comfortable uh, chairs all around. Nice long coffee ask, table. Is, th is there some sort of ritual area that your mother kept all <laughs> <laughs> that would uh, be well suited for this kind of thing. I, I believe that is the front room. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I, I assumed it was a basement. Is, is this no the sort did. of thing where we pull a, we pull away the carpet and there's something daubed in blood on the ground? We we don't do rituals in blood anymore. Just... <laughs> for at least one week you see the sign it, it's it's like it has been <laughs> six last, days it's... since last blood ritual. <laughs> blood rituals are for demons. We use bones and carcasses. Oh. Oh, shit. Devils are bad, aren't they? Yeah, sometimes. I just, I just very gently, like, pat Kendra on the shoulder. Wait, I was the bad guy. <laughs> was? Yes, yeah. You got us all locked in jail. Roswell hey, almost died. I did very good things lately, Roswell. Yes, Tip I Rail know. did die. Oh. Okay, so, hey... Uh, I'm going to plop down on a comfortable couch and start... I will give you my focus. Thank you. Start I do to... want a back though. I'm going to give it back. Okay. God. I can see, I can see that... <laughs> that she's just looming. I can feel <laughs> your dragon breath on me. <laughs> Sorry. Back. Okay. Your tail is hitting me. <laughs> Double it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I would like to scry on um, that beast thing. 
um, that was uh, about Kamaduk. to attack. Kamaduk. Yeah. Kamaduk. Yes. All right. Wisdom save. It is it is. It is. Kama duck. Kama tuk. Kama tuk. Oh. Uh, uh, eight. Full of tuk. Oh, and actually, it would be twenty three because I've no first hand. I've met the target. Oh, it's a zero. Okay, yeah. Wait a minute. Knowledge. First time you've met the target. Did we link it? What am I looking at? Sorry. I was looking at D&D Beyond. Okay. Uh, so, scrying into Kamatuk. What a scry baby. What does this ritual look like? Um, I think that I, um, I take the focus and I mimic, like, uh, like, kind of, like, pulling thread around it. And, um, to like these kind of golden ethereal threads kind of uh, glow around it and it pulls my focus in. All right. So as you do you kind of cat's cradle your way through it and then when the ritual completes, you kind of set it out and slip your hands out from it and just sort of lays on this net that then just kind of absorbs in. And as you... Your vision goes into this, scrying through. You see that same sort of golden weave, just sort of almost as like the transition between like what you're seeing and then going into the actual um, scrying. And you see uh, this large kind of bestial figure of Kamatuk standing maybe nine or so feet tall, but hunched over long, gangly, furry limbs with claws on it. And you see him uh, sort of pacing about and picking stuff up, um, kind of scraping his hand uh, through things. And you can see that his hand is bleeding um, and just sort of leaves this trail of blood back behind it. And um, as you kind of look almost through his eyes for a moment as the camera kind of just pans down and out around sort of what he's doing, kind of a haze around him that you can't kind of break through to see further uh you see that his hand is is uh it's bleeding because it's filled with uh weapons and he has in his hands it looks like a few daggers and short swords um just various weapons that he's he's scooped up and then you kind of hear that like almost gleeful giggle that he has and playful nature as he scampers in further into the listening pools and as he nears certain pools, he kind of flicks his claw through them and you see a splash and then he like licks it off and you kind of pause for a moment as, as he stops and he just sort of like casts the weapons down in front of him and just kind of clang on the floor um, and then looks up and as he looks up, you see a collection of dozens of people and they kind of look down and some of them come over and they look back up at him, a little confused, and then they bend over and pick up the weapons. And that is where we will take our break. I've got 10 more minutes of scrying. <laughs> this process continues okay. as you see weapons being brought over in playful glee and people picking them up. Okay. But it ends abruptly as as Akira picks up her focus. Give me that. <laughs> Glass. It's so it's breakable. Yes. And you do see um, from what you can see around Kamatuk, uh, the figures do match sort of stature and the racial aesthetic of the rear cool. Okay. Oh, this is real bad, folks. Folks are real bad, yeah. Are we, are we... Yes. So, five minute break. We'll okay. See you back, and we'll start to unravel. What does this mean? So bad. See you back in five minutes. Oh. It means bad. <laughs>
We're back! We have uh, all moved very close to our cameras. <laughs> You're terrifying, Holly. Um, <laughs> I am going to tweak some cameras just a little bit here. Tweak. As some of you have acquired better posture, some of you. Oh, now Holly has moved her camera back again. Here we go. You're muted. Sorry. All right, we are back in action. Welcome back. Let us continue to arrive unexpectedly at conclusions. It's a <laughs> inexplicable <laughs> jump to conclusions, Matt. All right, so where would we like to go next? Um, have have I finished my scry? Do I get to watch any past what I saw? Um, you do see you see several loads of um, weapons sort of being distributed uh, kind of unceremoniously, um, and mm. there's quite a you see quite a few individuals. So you guess that probably in in all of this, there's been maybe about, I don't know, three, four score of weapons distributed. Because he just takes big kind of heaping handfuls. And the weapons themselves look old and kind of beat up. And they're not like all like standard issue something. It just looks like a collection of things over time. And this is like a big game to him. Like it's kind of like, oh, this is gonna be fun. He, He's he, he is having a joyous time. Um, and then the the rough did the so you said about the number of weapons, but the number of people. What's a what's a rough? All of the weapons that rough. you saw distributed had people sort of like coming and picking them up. Okay. So you're guessing you saw maybe. 60 people something like that 60 okay. to 80 and when they p picked uh 60 to 80 okay and when they picked them up they were kind of like what do i do or did they look kind of confused you said um they looked a bit to make an insight check okay. i will do this we will I... see what we will see i will do this i will do an insight i will roll a mm -hmm. 20 Mm. You rolled a 10 that became a 20. Uh, My like result 20. is a yeah. 20. There you go. Um, so, some of them, um, some of them just look bewildered and disoriented. Um, others kind of pick up the weapon and you can tell they kind of like brandish it with some obvious knowledge and comfort level holding a weapon like they'll pick the sword up and they kind of like hold it out and they swing it around a little bit um and you get a little bit of that sense of like um almost like the sort of camaraderie of like rallying to war or something like that in um in all of them as they pick up weapons and they just sort of like some of them nod at each other and Kind of have like a moment of solidarity. Okay. I'm gonna stay with them as long as I can. Um and when I come out of it, I will relay everything to them, to my party. I will um look gently hand over the the globe to uh, back the orb back to Akira. Um, so, did we talk to any military before? There was military all about us, but they did. I think we need to try for someone high in the military that we met before, Nomarius. Hmm. She had this shiny, shiny, shiny plate armor. She. Hmm, there was, was someone. She was in charge. Her name is Commander Corsay. Yeah, but that specific person, like... It felt like that person had a, a personal vendetta against Kendra. Uh, something about the collar was unquestionably, you know, uh, 
but then Kendra didn't, and so there's, I don't know. We'll find out. Can't I can find and... her if she's here. Is you she stationed I... here? I don't know. I think when last I you think saw her, she was in Vesular. To. Last I saw her was definitely in Vesular. Actually, no, she did. She did come here. Um, thinking about it, she had come here. Yeah, the meeting that that you first met her was in Vesular, and then That's she did come here and was part of the briefing. Yes, she was. Well then, I shall. Uh, I, I assume it should be pretty easy to find a posted commander somewhere. Hey, Let's wait! Before, before, I'm afraid. Okay, you're. We don't want to for the military to kill the remaining Rerakul. They don't really know what they're doing. So, what? No, it... we need to convince them to send us. Yes. Right, but. But maybe the, is there an expert or something maybe we could find in the city that that can help with the mental state of them? Like, we don't have to bring. I appreciate that, but I don't think we have time right now for that. I think that that is that is maybe step two or step three. Step one is that we have to convince somebody who is in charge and has the ability, who has the authority, to say yes, you can do that to send us down. Okay, so we need to find someone now. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I'm afraid that uh, most of my skills don't tend towards the uh, legitimate side of anything. So Numerius and Roswell are probably our best bets here. Maybe we should just go to the military district and... Well, just I mean, I think Numerius in general... Makes a good impression on people. General. Apparently. <laughs> okay, focus, go on. Focus uh, uh, up. <laughs> sorry, I, sorry. I, I, I have an idea. Yes. Uh -oh. Yes. I mean, yes. Um, okay. Do I know if there's some kind of seal that is used oh. Oh, no. for, for, uh, for official matters, like, this person has a seal of approval of the people. Well, if if we know it, I can forge it. If we oh. know it, I could create it. And I don't want to do it, but Tevrin would. So orders are typically, if if they're issued sort of um, non-verbally, they are generally just created and signed, and. Um, it's just sort of a signature of whoever is issuing the order. Yeah, that wouldn't be lawful, though. That's definitely against the law. Yes, yes. it would be very. It would be extremely illegal. That would go counter to exactly what Kendra mentioned when we were yes. trying to well, not he... burn the bridges of the only ally we have secured. Right, but these these people here, I say, pointing at no one in particular, Tavern, um, <laughs> are going to go down there anyway, right? So what I was thinking was we give a letter to the same person we were talking to before to give to the Emperor, saying, if we don't hear from you in X amount of time, we're going to go ahead with our actions, as it's very time sensitive and for the good of everyone. If we hear from him, excellent. If we Wait. don't, we gave them... So what you're saying is you're going to send the emperor a directive. This is what's occurring. That's your letter to the emperor. Yeah. Yes. Um, hey, stop. We don't have any authority. I, uh, <laughs> I, I love, I love the vibe of this plan. <laughs> oh my <God>. However, <laughs> however, before we go direct, as much as I, I do love forging things, and I would love to have the opportunity to forge things, but, um, Perhaps we should not go directly to that. Let's see first if we can get this a little bit more legitimately before we start. That That is also fine. This is just an alternative. Yes, I think it's something to keep in mind, certainly. Um, but step one is that we need to try to get somebody to... I will try to locate Commander Corsace, as I have phonetically understood it to be. Uh, I, I will go with you too. And if 
If she is unavailable, I will find someone of appropriate rank and office. All right. So to sort of um, fast track this a bit, you do uh, return towards uh, the military kind of quarter of um, the Emberfields district and you go to the sort of more official building rather than just going to like where all the Ooh, soldiers the are, nice. are, are housed. Yeah, it is very sort of um, grandiose architecture and you can tell that a lot of a lot of care and attention to detail has been put into all of this. There's countless scores of statues of various generals and soldiers ah, and stuff. Yes. And oh, this is the, this is correct. Dracorin, Dracorin pageantry everywhere, um, sort of blacks and crimsons and golds uh, for the color of the empire on banners and such. And uh, as you enter into uh, what is uh, what you now kind of after going inside realize is the the headquarters building of kind of the military presence here. Uh, you are informed that um, Commander Corsese is personally leading um, a mission that is headed to Vesular and is no longer in the city. Of course she right. fucking is. So what I need, then, is uh, her appropriate counterpart here. The Nomeris Craze. That's right, sir. Nomeris, you may have heard of this. All right. Uh, takes your name down and... Uh, Says, I, start tapping I will foot. return shortly with the lieutenant. Mm. Lieutenant doesn't sound like commander, you know. <laughs> it's someone, though, Nomarius. We haven't been able to talk to anybody yet. All right. We have. Um, We've talked to lots of people. So you wait about five minutes or so, and um, then you see a female, um, what you recognize as an officer uh, in current military half elf and um fairly numerous your 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 first kind of impression of it is she's a little small to be an officer um mm. but has like hair kind of uh pulled back and and up uh wears wearing right now a uh, kind of arming sword at her sides um dressed in leather armor um and she's kind of taking off dueling gloves at the moment as she comes in as if she was just training or something um like that uh, what is it you need i've uh, heard that uh, there was some trouble afoot there is indeed we have uh, i have no mary's grace this is roswell a cleric of Istus. yes uh, excellent good i remembered ah so, uh, in our dealings with our missions in coordination with Commander Corsace, uh, we have uh, helped combat, secure, and look to further do so with the environment um, underneath the city. Uh, I understand that there is a restricted area. We have put in a proper request, although uh, we are uh, to, to the Emperor for further uh, exploration and uh, securing of the area, including possible uh, refugees. Problem is, is that is a slow process. And although I would adhere to process, I would also do my best to see if this organization through Commander Corsese's uh, uh, influence or yourself could expedite the situation for it is a matter of blood she kind of nods uh, go ahead and make a persuasion roll for me please that is unfortunate for all involved actually i'm not that bad it's not the worst you're probably better but, than me and there's my character sheet and persuasion it's not the worst, not the, worst. the dice is rolled a two i've gotten an eight Right. I, I was I was even gonna bend luck for you, but I don't think even luck's That's gonna. That's okay. Go here. I also have the lucky feet, and so I will do that. Uh, and actually, I have a uh, a lucky feet that actually has that in there. That becomes a nine plus six is a fifteen. That is a uh, much better I'm gonna, result. I'm gonna bend luck anyway. You're not in the area. Are you there? Oh, am, am I not here? 
I think we're in the. I think we're outside, but we're not inside. Uh, the... if, if if I can't see you, then ignore this. Yeah. But if I can see him, add four. We did only you introduce... did you come in or or not? Uh, I I stayed outside. Unless everybody specifically like wanted to stay out and leave him alone. I would have kept Kendra out of there. Even if you, the rest have, of us are waiting outside. It, Roswell and Demarius went inside. Nobody else. Even if, if you if had you, come in, I would have only introduced Roswell. <laughs> <laughs> because specifically, because we thought we were going to go see Commander Corsay, and she did not like Kendra at all. Okay, then so I'll I would have out. tried to keep Kendra out of it. Then I will stay out, and I will keep my. Uh, Fifteen is the result, based on my lucky feet. Fifteen. All right. Good to know. Um. She sort of nods, listening. I, yes, the uh, the coil pushers can uh, muck things up quite a bit. Um, definitely. That's why we come to you. We understand it's under your uh, specific domain, correctly. It is uh, currently currently a theater of conflict that we are dealing with. Um, and you say it's a matter of life or death. Uh, Correct. Am... Refugees may be involved. They may be uh, conscripted into uh, uh, bringing up arms against uh, Dracoran assets, which would be very unfortunate. We would like very much to have access to the to the theater of operations so that we may uh, diffuse the situation. We have uh, personal interest as well. Uh, well, I appreciate you bringing it to my attention, and uh, as uh, you are good stealing standing de dealing with the uh, empire itself um and uh military operations as uh, congratulations on your most recent success from what i've heard uh, i'll uh, dispatch a team along with you and uh give you a purview to investigate this matter and resolve it uh, in the name of the empire excellent how quickly can your escort be ready as we are primed and eager I've recently scried on this, and it is time is of the essence. I can have a team ready in about uh, five to ten minutes. This is uh, what we do. We uh, stand guard to keep a watchful eye over the Empire. And, Your uh, efficiency is admirable. Excellent. Excellent work. Shall I have them meet you at the, uh, the descent to the city itself? Yes, access point. Let us go. Yes, please. All right. Is that where you head? Yes. yes. Turn around all military like, woo! Snappy 180 degree turn. March on out. High step a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. I give Demarius a high five right. when I see him come out like that. <laughs> so I take you it don't know I was successful, but of course I was. <laughs> I mean, we were. Roswell was good. I look oh. like a very good sidekick. Thank you. You're not a sidekick, Roswell. This is my wheelhouse, not yours. That is the only issue here. Not the fact that you are a sidekick. You are no lesser nor greater than myself. Uh... <laughs> I was. It was a compliment. Thanks. Wow. I. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Okay. Let's go. To the platform that the descends into the darkness of the earth. All right, um, Kendra, so, you hide. So, uh, heading, hide. heading uh, your way over there, kind of uh, making haste. Uh, <laughs> those of you um, who don't travel around in armor and such, uh, donning it and readying your kind of adventuring gear. Um, as I'm guessing most of you don't sort of walk around kind of just armed out to the teeth. Um, I take all my of cape this. off. Ready. Yeah. Um, <laughs> going as as you wait uh, sort of at the top, um, it appears that word has already reached um, those uh, who tend to the lift itself as they, they greet you. And within uh, five minutes of your arrival, um, a team of eight soldiers uh, joins. Uh, looks to be um, fairly standard from what you can tell. Uh, Dracoran um, infantry men. Uh, the uh, head head 
of them does wear sort of a crimson kind of cloak, uh, whereas the rest of them are not. They all carry uh, smallish packs uh, and long swords on their hips, and a couple of them have spears, and it does seem like they're all wearing various forms of kind of chain mail and that, and that kind of thing. Uh, and the man at the head of their um, column steps forward. I see that uh, you are in need of an escort. Yes, my name please. Is, my name is Burn. Um, and I have, I have right. been instructed that there is some sort of urgent matter... Um, below, but was not briefed on the details. It said you had some intelligence on that. I would appreciate a briefing as we descend. Well, importantly, are there supplies to be had at the quartermaster down be below? We may be a few days if it, if the travel is slow. There are um, indeed uh, some supplies <laughs> to be had if you are in need of them. Uh, oh, we... there it is carry currently what we need uh, not for a long campaign but we are uh willing and able to scavenge as we go should the need arise um Excellent. so i am going to tell them i assume so hang on it sounded like most people in in the military in this area had heard of agthamon like kind of know of crude's report for the most part like it seems like this evil that was or they know they know when do we have a sense of like they know that we did something for the empire do we know what exactly they think that was um That's a better question yes thank you you get the sense that they don't they're kind of used to not asking specific questions if they're not told specific information um, so they know that you have recently done successful, like the Lieutenant you talked to, you got the impression that she had a little bit more information, but, um, these soldiers don't, wouldn't have any reason unless they were stationed down there to know. Um, so there's just a general accolade issued that we yeah. apparently got. So, and you are, yeah, you are generally, and since like, it's sort of. The, um, the Empire and their army does employ adventurers, so if you're in the area and flagged as people who have helped and are generally um, able to work with the military itself, then you're, you're known. Um, and there's also probably a bit of gossip that has come out um, surrounding rumors and such as these things do happen, but officially um, what has happened is... Okay not not pass down the chain of command to soldiers of this level gotcha all right so what i'm going to say is that there are people there there are people that got trapped down below and are currently at the mercy of this large monster that was related to the to what we had fought below in service of the empire it was kind of a lackey to this larger evil and, and these get... uh, citizens, are they part of the I... force that secured the area originally, um, the um, archaeology it is, team? It, it is important to note these are not citizens, and we do not know for certain, um, to be frank, we are not certain how they react to seeing people in Imperial uniforms, which is why we must request that you allow us to handle any sort of... Obviously... We, we want to avoid any bloodshed, but I say this so that if somebody turns weapons on you, you understand that these are not, uh, these people I think are very confused and they have been manipulated by this creature. And it's, it is an issue that we intend to handle ourselves to make sure that none of your men uh, are placed in harm's way. He sort of uh, looks back over his shoulder at the men they're all kind of listening. It says, it's our job to be placed in harm's way, and um, well, we're not, we're not afraid of it. Um, oh, believe but me, it, says... it isn't a reflection on you or your your ability to handle the threat. Of course, you could handle it, but um, we're hoping to do this with it. We're hoping to handle that particular aspect of this without swords. Uh, right. You say that these these people aren't citizens of the empire and are taking up 
arms against the Empire? They, like I said, they have been manipulated. Perhaps mm-hmm. magically so. Yes, I believe that it's, it is a, I don't believe that they are completely cognizant of what they are doing. This thing gleefully threw down weapons in front of them and is looking to make sport of their misery and death. So they are going to be armed, but it's at the pleasure of this beast. It's kind of fucked up. Well, our, our, our goal here is to dispatch the beast. Plead forth, uh, we will heed your, uh, your lead, uh, unless uh, things get dicey, and then uh, we'll get slicey if they do. Well said. Yeah. Okay. After all that is like taken care of, I want to be like just to some random soldier. So, what's up? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> That's amazing. Please go on. <laughs> want more. <laughs> Oh, this is the best moment of the night. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> the rickety lost the rickety elevator just sort of slowly <laughs> rumbles down as uh, Kira stands uh, next to. The eight, uh, eight soldiers, um, <laughs> the one on the outside, sort of looking over. Um, hello? Uh, you like to hang out at the queue? <laughs> at the what? Dude, Ted is just slowly t- <laughs> turning towards this conversation. <laughs> uh, excuse me, ma'am. I didn't catch the end of that. Hang out where? No, the queue. <laughs> The queue? What the fuck is going on? The the the, the club, please. <laughs> I gently just tap her on the shoulder. <laughs> um, don't. Don't mind her. She's not from around here. She no, has no. fits. You know, um, you know the Havels. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. <laughs> sorry, I, I don't. I knew of them. Okay, I thought maybe you'd hang out at the queue on your time off, and and you you maybe knew this this girl named Sarah what is, Havel. What is a queue? <laughs> Do you mean the the proscenium? Yeah. Or like whatever. That's what it's <laughs> Can't well, it's can't say that I do know any of the Havels, um Hey, thanks for your time. Yeah. Like do you want do you want to hang out at recess? <laughs> He kind of like just just nods and kind of puts his hand on his like the sort of cross guard of his sword, then takes like one step in towards the center of of uh, the rest of the men. So they all kind of look at you and are just sort of like eyebrows raised. My eyes are burning right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> she had so too much makeup on her face. After a couple of a uh, couple of hours, oh, the uh, the lift does. <laughs> Finally, rumble to a stop. Um, the <laughs> outer gates open, and uh, you're greeted uh, by uh, two guards. There, you do recognize one of them as uh, you've probably seen some of the, their rotations before, uh, and they have a few lit torches in which they hand to you as you head into the city proper itself. What would you like to do? I think we're just gonna head through. I think so too, because what, like, what time of day did we go down? Uh, this is probably like mid afternoon. So camping is the most likely. Oh, it's mid afternoon now. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, because you, you left in the morning to go do all of your stuff, and you've been poking around quite a bit, and then you went back to Kinder's house, and then you back into town and so yeah so you're probably you're probably coming up on like 4 p.m or so because it takes a few hours to descend it's two and a half days from the start of the elevator so we're half a day into that period. at a at a normal pace which would be a good pace to be at unless unless there's a he's not he's not butchering them as we speak he's arming them Right, but that was about a couple hours ago. So, we do have a drought to contend with down here as well. All right, this uh, it's important to note, and I'll, I'll tell uh, uh, blank ranked burn uh, that this is on the border of drought territory, if not. If not actually in their territory, I'm not exactly sure their domain or border situation. I've uh, come to understand that the uh, territorial line's been a bit blurred as of late. Uh, so, I mean, we'll uh, keep our wits about us, but if we uh, see any of the um, thunder species, we'll, uh, we'll put them in the right place. Under underground. Yes. Like only if they attack first, though, right? Uh, With the drow. Mm. If they in, impinge upon our borders, then um, orders orders are to kill first, ask questions later. There are borders for reasons protect our security. We do not infringe upon their lands. Um, as they should not infringe upon ours. Let's right. just hope we don't run into any drow, and this will be a quick trip. Can you just remember that this one's with us? This face right here is with us. Noted. Maybe all of you don't mistake him for someone else. He's also not wearing a, a drow military uniform. Or he isn't those. that far off. Though. Tevrin is wearing all of the armor that he has from the military. He's like, <laughs> Scratch he has, out symbols. He ha well, he has like civilian wear underneath it, but like his, he, like you know, his gauntlets and all of his like armor and like there's armor on his boots and even like the the sheath that the moonblade is in is all very clearly drow. Look for the moonblade sheath. It's, it's well, the moonblade itself should should easily distinguish you from the others. Yeah, and I mean, and like he does, like he has the, this, like he has some bright colored fabric, like he has this kind of like yellow silk that's wrapped underneath the gauntlets, and like uh, this kind of like bright purple scarf that's tied around his hips under his belt. So like there are definitely things that distinguish him, but like you, yeah. there's never a moment when you look at what Tevrin's wearing and you're not like, this man was in the Drow military because he obviously was. I never knew. Fair enough. Good night. <laughs> All right, so I think we continue and go as far as we can till we need to camp out. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scout ahead a little bit. I'm going to stay maybe like thirty feet in front of the party, and just like keep an eye on what's going on up there. All right, uh, stealth roll and perception. Okay, one stealth roll. 27. All right. Hmm? And Dude, a where is he? I don't see it. Perception roll. There it is. I see the perception roll. 16. All right. Uh, looking around this area, you know you're still kind of in Dracorn territory. Um, not much sound or movement or anything like that. You continue on for uh, quite some ways. You do see that there is um, kind of a, a standard formation amongst your escort. Um, two of them are kind of taking point. The other two hang back um, sort of maybe about 10, 15 paces behind. And then 
the remainder flank kind of on either side of you um, as you guys just sort of gaggle your way down there. A um, couple of them are are armed with ranged weapons. Uh, some of them have crossbows out. Um, I also have a crossbow. And never fairly anything. uneventful um, as you make your way forward. A few hours. The fast forward button. Yes, few hours. Few hours pass, and you uh, find an area suitable to make camp. Um, you are starting to get into areas where um, things bend off, uh, forking in different directions. There are some cavernous outcroppings uh, into the walls to kind of tuck yourself in. Um, this is all starting to look. Not familiar in that you've been to this specific place before, but familiar in that the geography is, you know, um, something that you did spend quite a few days uh, gallivanting around in about a month ago. Yeah, and I think I've got the maps out that I had from my father, you know, um, with us too. How many soldiers are with us? Eight. Damn it. I can make the hut, but I can only fit nine people total. Can you make a second hut or a hut hut? No. Just the one. Only after a hike. <laughs> Actually, it's before the hike as you're well aware. <laughs> Sorry, what sports ball is this about? Sports ball, that's correct. Um, so I don't know whether I should do that or not. <laughs> Well, we've got a lot of us protecting us, so I don't know. Uh, our escort is uh, is responsible for their own camping. I'm assuming. I think we should handle and enjoy what we can, including okay. your hut. Yeah. All right. I mean, we have there's space for four more people within it. Is there though? <sighs> Spread all the bottles. <laughs> you take care of your own. We are um, no strangers to sleeping in dangerous places. Right. Because Tevin does look like genuinely apologetic, also. On the outside. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, it's 10 foot dome of a movable force springs up. Mm -hmm. All right. They offer to stand watch, um, if uh, that is something that you would like to participate I... in. You're more than welcome to. Yeah, I mean, like, Tevrin's gonna do his usual, like, four hours trance and then s s keep watch for the other four. I snore. Cool. <laughs> uh, bef before, before we sleep, any spells you want to put in the ring of Spellness. Okay, I have some spells. Hold on. Minor illusion. Minor <laughs> illusion. No, as a, uh, as a as a paladin, I actually have zone of truth. I have aid. I don't even know what warding. How about is. a? Can you do? You oh. can do. It's I it's three spell slots, but it up has to, to. Up to five levels worth of spells. Do you want mass healing word? Is what level is what level is that? Third. You got mass healing word or mass what's what's mass cure wounds? Ooh, this is terrible. Fifth. Have you got any of those? I do. I just didn't know if you wanted like two spells in there. Do you know what I mean? Uh I've got a lot of second level spells my uh, spell slots of my own, so unless we want to put a second level specifically in there. No, I just didn't know if you had anything in mind. I, um, I, I, I don't know personally. I can put uh, mass cure wounds in your ring. I have the command spell at first level. Uh, I'm commanding enough as it is, Numeria. I don't have suggestion. I can't make people. Uh, never mind. But I have the command spell. I think mass. 
That's curious. Too sure. And then sleep. All right. The night goes by uneventfully. And you sort of awaken. The soldiers are up and ready to go. What would you like to do? Burn, what is your rank? <laughs> I am a battalion leader. Why? I was unsure. I'm trying to familiarize myself better with the military doings of the Corn Empire. Lieutenant, oh, what was her name? I had asked but never knew. <laughs> Just sort of oh. looks at you. Um, you know, uh, Commander Corsace is uh, the lieutenant there in, in the capital. So the one that probably oh. dispatched you. Our CO. Yes, your co. Uh, her name is Mesa. Oh, yes. I am going to do the same thing. Yeah, we should continue. All right. Um, pressing onwards. Um, on about halfway through um, the day, so maybe about four hours of traveling or so, since you guys aren't, you know, pushing. Um, Tebrin, scouting up ahead, you do notice that um, there is remnants of what appears to be a movement of drow forces you sort of recognize kind of patterns of um tracks that have been have been covered up a bit and kind of the general tactics and mm -hmm. it looks to you like uh kind of a a follow and kind of retreat just basically keeping tabs on things type of uh, type of maneuver can I take a gander at how, or take a guess at how old those are? Uh, yeah, make a survival check for me. Twenty-three. Uh, looking, it seems quite recent. Definitely in the last like day or two. So this was post temple. It looks like to me. Yes. Okay. Seems pretty will... recent, like in the last day or two. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep track of... Oh, also, we had a long rest. I have all of my hit die back. And my spell slots. And I am going to message to Nomarius and tell him what I have seen. What is the... Uh, what did you say? Um, it looks like some drow have been through here scouting things out. Recently. Recently, thirty minutes, or recently, three recently, weeks. Recently, recently, twenty-four hours. Okay. Probably tell your battalion leader back there about it too. <clears throat> Burn! Somehow, somehow, I don't think he will take particularly well to my voice suddenly uh, leaping uh, to. Life our scout head. has informed us that the drow activity is under 24 hours in this very spot which means expeditionary incursions are occurring as i assume would be expected but has now been confirmed that's um good to know for sure um, um, stay on guard on guard indeed it's a gnome joke i'm sorry yeah. i'll uh, i'll get it next time yeah, you will. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm going to keep, um, I presume, like, there's nothing. I'm just seeing, like, evidence of them having gone through here and nothing else. Yeah. I mean, oh, you don't, you don't trap. see oh, them. <laughs> okay. Then I will continue moving forward. I, should I reroll my stealth and perception? Uh, yes, now that you've kind of noticed stuff that'll change, um, 
how we do things. Only a 17 on stealth. Ouch. All right. Yeah, that's terrible. High teens. I rolled a two. And uh, 23 on perception. Stand by. Ooh. Is Akira continuing to hit on soldiers? I'm not hitting on them. I was trying to find Siora. Yeah, but then, but then, what was said was said. And I then was you have some guy talk. I. You have some. <laughs> you have some interesting ways of like finding somebody. I just want you know, like be like. You know, Siora, she, she hang out at the queue. She's hey, at so, party Havel. Oh, so, Soldier, you've got beautiful eyes. You know what Siora is? <laughs> I didn't say anything about anyone's eyes. <laughs> you wanted to, though. <laughs> no, I was just trying to, you know, like, guy talk. Stop. I think. I'll never do it again, I swear. No, please, do it all the time. All right, um... Poking ahead, uh, you you do kind of come into an area that uh, is a little bit more of an open ravine where this uh, path that you're on goes and the cliff kind of drops out uh, down beneath. You can see that there are other paths and kind of like holes out in kind of the far wall out. This would be a great place for an ambush um, from what you can tell. And, Do I see an ambush? <laughs> uh, you don't see anything that looks ambush-like. Uh, uh, you do, though, in kind of stopping and carefully considering the terrain around you, uh, you do come all of a sudden to a, uh, a sound uh, different than what you've sort of heard, which is largely nothing, um, of dripping and flowing water. Um, hmm. And you look across and you do see that there is like sort of a um, a little bit of a waterfall coming maybe about 120 feet sort of out in the cave kind of has a very faint kind of bioluminescent glow to it. And there's little speckled patches of bioluminescence um, kind of around in this more open chasm area. Um, I'm going to slow down and hang back a little bit and I am going to quietly message back to Numerius. Keep your guard up. There's a spot coming up I don't like much. That Numerius just would immediately bring his assistant. shield and go into a defensive stance and say, stand ready. The soldiers kind of like all draw their weapons. And, and I'm just going to find like a corner to tuck myself into. And... All right. Um, as you what? kind of hunker down and wait as you hear the clanking of your party coming up um, back behind. You do hear um, sort of like and some some sort of like sound of some rocks just um, coming down. Um, Can I zero in on where I think that's? Um, it's coming from kind of like across across the chasm, nowhere near you. But you do you do notice from it that any sound just sort of echoes and reverberates through. Um, through this entire chamber. Uh, How far away? It's about 60 feet until the path kind of winds back down into like sort of a tunnel rather than this exposed area. Okay, I'm just, I'm gonna try to hide myself as best as I can. And I just wanna keep keep watch because I've, I've warned the party what's coming, but the party is also not being particularly quiet. So I'm gonna wait and see what reacts to the party. Uh, <laughs> all right um so waiting your party just slowly approaches party you get to sort of the opening to this area what would you like to do what is the light source situation for the humans with us uh there is a very light kind of bioluminescent glow um two of the two of the soldiers that are at kind of like the center are both carrying torches okay and not every single one of the soldiers is human. There are a couple have elves among them. I see. My guess perceptions are in order. That's the only thing I can think to do this, right away. Does this look like uh, the beginning of the listening pools? 
Um, or maybe the back end of it. I don't it know. It looks how it looks similar. Um, since Tebrin, you've been kind of leading the charge. Give me a survival check. This is something I should have done a little bit um, earlier. Um, eleven. On, on how well we're kind of navigating our way down. Just an eleven. Okay. So, Tebrin, you've kind of, you're maybe about 10 or 15 feet out in this chasm area, but kind of tucked in behind a little outcropping from the wall in a little bit of shadow. I mean, there's a lot of shadow here. It's all dim light, but um, out of any bright, brighter patches from the bioluminescence. And you do see that the light from the torches sort of in the tunnel that you've all come down um, is kind of spilling out into the cavern a little bit now. Uh, illuminating that entrance. So you're guessing if anyone's watching it, they know 100% that there's somebody in this. Okay, and so was I was I able to get like a, a solid bearing on where the rocks fell down? No? Okay. No. I'm assuming the waterfall is making making it hard to uh yeah i mean it's not like a deafening roar from the waterfall but you can once you get towards towards the out yeah and it does echo so like it's hard to pinpoint where sounds are coming from because they kind of bounce all over the the chamber and you can see that the 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 walls here too are they they look less jagged they're smooth like water has run through and over these various points in time roswell or akira do we have any kind of illumination, amazing, divine, you know, spells? You, you want some light? Well, up ahead, not necessarily with us. We already stick out. Uh, I can use my ring. I have orbs. I think I can move. I can also. Do you, do you mean the can... lightning? Wait. No. No, 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 no. Different from the lightning. Hmm. Uh, what's my ring of shooting stars? Well, how did that battalion die? Uh... <laughs> well. Um, I do not have anything like of that note. I do. Do dancing lights. Well, I don't I see you, lights. most likely. Well, I have no, the, I, I it can do that. Um, okay. Or I think there's little balls of light that I can use. Yes, I believe they are called ball lightning. <laughs> No, not those! <laughs> uh, I guess I shouldn't use those. But it does have... Because you can lights. you can summon dancing lights up to 120 feet in front of you, and you can make them a little man. Mm. Is that what you want, Amiris? Did you just say little man? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Made of light? <laughs> Sounds pretty amazing. However, just illuminating the situation ahead of us would be advantageous. Or, you know, I can cast light on this dagger and someone can throw it over there. Don't get rid of a weapon. Just use dancing lights. This is silly. Okay, well, then I will use my ring for Would you like the text of dancing lights? Yes, I would. <laughs> there is the text of dancing lights. All right, so just kind of distributing these to illuminate your path forward. Is that the idea here? Yes. All right, so it's kind of warm, yellowish, white light glows filling up the entire space uh, along. And you can see that the whole path in front of you is now glowing. Tebrin, you just immediately kind of um, have your 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 sort of night vision just completely blown as these <laughs> um, light up in front of you, and then you kind of come back down um, into it. And Tebrin, as this happens, you immediately hear coming from sort of seeming like down lower. Um, you hear kind of clanging of and clamoring of metal very faintly. Drums in the deep. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna add my own dancing lights into the mix. 
Um, and I'm going to form it up into that humanoid shape kind of in the center of the space. There I am. <laughs> All right. Actually, it says medium size, so it's medium not little at all. Medium is bigger than a... So, <laughs> it's, it's, mm. This lit humanoid-like thing forms up. <laughs> so lit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any reaction to the humanoid thing or no? Uh, make a perception roll for me. Okay. Can I also do this? Yep. <laughs> we both rolled a 24. Our power is combined. Mm -hmm. so if you both roll it, that means I cut it in half, right? And then... Yep. All right, so um, you hear no more of the sort of trickling rocks, um, but the the clanging does sort of continue, and you think you hear kind of like splashing, and then you hear a sound echo that's it's a very strange. Uh, strange sort of sound that's not akin to others that you've heard, and it sounds it sounds almost like a a slap, like smack sound that just reverberates through. As if it's a body smacking a pool of water. Um, it does sound like something coming in contact with water. Yes. Are we about to get eaten by a squid? Uh. A kraken. A cave kraken? Oh my god, I'm ready. <laughs> Casey pulls up <laughs> the stats for a cave kraken. It's like, well, oh, you are I'm now. It was writing. just, it, it was gonna be a waterfall attack, but um, cave kraken. Uh, you don't really know what a cave kraken sounds like, so it's very difficult to. Does it sound like that? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It's canon. No. Does it sound like that thing we got attacked by when we went down here the the first time, but the other direction? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one that starts with an O. An octium? Is that what it was? I don't know. I don't even remember that. That we was were actually like, in the I believe... sewers right below the yeah. Uh, yeah. It was right in below the, sewers the drainage and... area. I seem to remember shooting Nemarius oh, accidentally. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember. You're gonna have that's to be more so specific. so many different <laughs> options, yeah. <laughs> I think that's happened in like a dozen encounters now where Nemarius has been shot. I think I've only done it twice though. Ooh! I can... So what would you guys like to do? There's sounds coming from kind of deep down this ravine below you. You've heard rocks on the far wall the path in front of you is now very well illuminated it's about 60 feet to get towards to the next passage and there's kind of like out so the there's a wall to your left the ravine goes down to your or other way around there's a wall to your right the ravine drops down to the left and sort of out past the ravine on the far wall um, of kind of the opposite part of the ravine, there is a waterfall kind of trickling down. Okay, if our scout hasn't revealed herself, himself, um, the, uh, the, the main party, I would assume, would continue on in this slow, defensive pace. Yeah, I mean, if, as I, like, notice things, I might pass it back quietly by a message, but, like, for the moment, I'm staying tucked back away from the ravine. I'm gonna kind of like loud whisper. I can use arcane eye to see. Ahead. If that will be a, uh, able know. to see our. It's only thirty feet. <laughs> I can see thirty feet. <laughs> well, this is useful to me. Maybe not you. <laughs> yeah. I, I so forget I... you do not do well in the dark. So the the two soldiers that were sort of at point kind of step out in front past you, Tebra, and they don't see you um, and continue <laughs> going and slowly make their way about 30 feet, kind of looking around cautiously, 40 feet through. I'm following. One of them look looks sort of 
back over, seeing you coming, Numerius, and they cross through. Turning at the other side, one of them kind of just shrugs back. Smack. <laughs> Marius, how does it look? A little humid. I'm assuming all the the air gets real humidy. Yeah, there is there is this it's sort of like and... yeah, dank, like moldy, moldy nature to it. There's the dankest memes down there. Yeah. Okay. The, um, who would live I... down here? As I continue on, <laughs> I will follow. Right. I am just gonna... I'm not doing anything until the entire party's through. Alright, so everybody heading through, the main group kind of begins to move through, and as you guys get about halfway through, you hear this, like, odd, sort of almost bestial laugh kind of echo up uh, through things, followed by another of the sort of loud smacking noises. And then you hear, you do hear some voices. You can't really make out what they're saying, but it, it sounds like kind of like, like yelling, kind of like just a general like rabble of a crowd, followed by more laughter. Hmm. Uh, and to you drop move, off. Yeah, you move through without any incident aside from these sounds and the soldiers like some of them kind of positioned down and they kind of like hold their their uh their crossbows pointed down at it and there's this general sort of like the mood changes and there's this sense of unease going through um as these sounds continue now the the drop off itself uh, it's an immeasurable unknown distance, correct? Uh, it's farther than you can see. You do see, looking down, you do see there are a couple points of, like, bioluminescence that are, like, 60, maybe 100 feet down. Okay. And, uh, is it a straight drop, or is it a, uh, sloping drop? Uh, there are, it's not just sheer straight down. There are parts that are sheer, there are parts that are very steep sloped. You can see there are little outcroppings here and there. It's very much non-uniform, and in the way it is and beyond that what is the far wall uh across looking straight across the the opening uh is it like at the 10 foot mark close or is it just open into air the the closest spot is maybe about 15 feet to that far wall and then it, it's not like perfectly parallel it kind of ebbs and flows away but the there is a, a spot about two-thirds of the way down that that bunches out to maybe about 15 feet I don't mean from our side. I mean, is there an opposing wall past this opening? Like you said that there's nothing on our left and a wall to our right or vice versa, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if there's nothing on the one side, is that true? If I look straight, straight left? Like out over the ravine. Right, right. Is there a far wall at one point or is it just an open, open area? You can, you can see the other side of this like crevasse or ravine. You can see the other opposing wall that makes it up throughout the entirety of it. It's not like this huge, huge chasm. It's like uh, a sliver that's kind of like where the earth has cracked and pulled apart. Right. So is it 50 feet away or like 10 feet away? It, it's kind of in like the varying between like 15 to 30 feet away. Okay. I see, I see. So we could easily drop down a light source and get a better view of whatever's down there, including the fact that we re when we were down in the listening pools, there was always dripping from above. So this might be directly above our destination. Plus the, the maniacal laughter kind of fits. Okay. Slapping of water also. I think we follow those sounds as closely as we can. But can we, can we, is there any way to know what's straight down? Do you think or have? always throw something down there what is clear that we are not hidden from them so i don't i think that's actually a pretty good idea at this point um, we also have some climbing kits oh my I god 
<laughs> Kevin <laughs> manifests himself in the ah. middle. Oh. I could clamber down a little ways. Everyone make a perception roll for me. Fourteen. All right, shield of advantage, do your thing. Two twenty-two, so I'll go with the twenty-two. I rolled a sixteen. Nineteen for me. I rolled an eight. Or I rolled a two. All right. Continue. Okay. Yes, but look at the terrain. Is this something you would do so easily? Or will you go, I'm halfway down, I regret this. Well, I mean, if I have a climbing kit with me, I think I'm pretty confident. Uh, how far down do we think it is? We don't know. That's the point. At least a hundred feet down, I see some of the those uh, the mushroom goo that's still glowy, or whatever it is. Could so. Go ahead. Um, I have an idea that doesn't put you down there, but I also don't mind if you go down. It depends how much we want to use you as a canary. <laughs> I mean, that's not funny. Um, I could send down one of my bag of tricks friends. Wait, do you have open communication with those things? I... Hold on. Let me find the exact wording. I... Couldn't we, in essence, cast light on them, too? Yes. <laughs> You can cast uh, light on a rock. You don't have to throw a living creature into this ravine. <laughs> but we want the giant elk down there is the thing. Uh, you can use a bonus. Or a random one, and as the boar starts manifesting, hit light with it. I could use my bonus action to command how the creature moves and what action it takes on its next turn or to give it general orders. Um, so I get, it can understand me, so I can have it do certain things if it sees certain things. That's fantastic, but it can relay no information back to us, correct? So, correct. This is where Tevern shines. As we, we, we I, am capable, any... I am capable of communication. But we can and see higher anything... thinking. We can see if there's anything aggressive down there. I mean, yes, I mean, like, if, if, you, throw, if you throw the elk down there, then the elk will... It's not going to be an elk. The elk only comes when you don't want the elk. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think at this moment we don't actually want the elk. You know what? I don't know what- Do you have an unlimited number of these sacrificial animals that we keep having to deal with? Three three per day. Oh, so yeah. Roswell, oh. as, you're, as you're sort of like listening to this and assessing the situation, you see uh, two of two of the, the floating uh, lights that have been cast kind of move around to opposite sides of you. What? Okay. Oh god. Akira, you didn't need to I can see. No, why, why did I, you move I didn't minor little man. Akira, your four lights are in the same place. And as you uh as you sort of look and do this, the two on either side of you all of a sudden <laughs> there's this bolt of uh lightning that shoots between all of them, um, both targeted you and they are flanking you, Roswell. Oh, are these fucking these wisps or will -o -wisps? um i will need all of us to oh, roll shit. initiative I, hate I fucking hate will o wisps um burr, 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 burr. do we I have like a will map whips uh you are no you don't have it's theater of the, of the mind. mind uh Where there are token? your toker tokens are there you guys took too long let me clear this out um am i missing or is my token not out right now oh there it is it just wasn't where I was expecting it to be. All of our tokens are right at Chora, if you need to find it on the map. Also, some of those tokens are the old tokens, so if you remove it and get the new oh, token, yeah, it'll be are. a new updated art. Oh. 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 Huh. There we go. Oh. Oh, it's magic. But that requires that we uh, uh, oh. change it on here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Oreo. <coughs> What's in the middle? That one. Mm, 22. Stuff. It's good to be me. Oh, yeah. Initiative. That's what we're doing. Yes. yes.
All right. Is everybody on here? And we'll do just fine. Uh, one, two, three. Soldiers are not on here. I have them on a different map. Um, try to delete her. I just hit delete on your keyboard. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, okay. uh, And then you can re-roll your initiative and then manually change it. All right. Um, Come on, current players. All right. Um, what the hell? Wait a minute. Good. Soldiers are right on top of this. Amazing. All right. So, uh, if that's his armor, I'm a little jelly. The um, glowing light orbs are first. Uh, the two sort of flanking surrounding you are going to make their attacks at advantage. Roswell, mm -hmm. no one saw him coming. So, first attack. Is a 23. Uh, yes. They are well of wisps. And you don't know. Don't read that. The next one is <laughs> double sixes. So uh, you take eight points of lightning damage uh, from that first. Um, Ouch. And I hear your ring has betrayed us. <laughs> as a, yeah, they do look very, very similar to all these uh, balls of light. As you see, um, see the these two blink in and then the arc um, shut up. You see ten of these orbs just sort of um, appear at various uh, spots, all sort of in and amongst you, and Kira, you lose kind of track of which orbs are yours and which aren't um, in all of this. And we will go into initiative order. Uh, so you see ten of these things around. Tebrin, you are first to go. Alright, I'm gonna step up behind Roswell. I'm gonna start with one attack on one of them, the first one, strikes my fancy. My fancy. All right, go ahead with and the make moon blade. an attack. Or actually, I'm, can I flank it? Can I come up on one side of it? Yep. I'm gonna take this one at advantage. Mm. How does a twenty-four sound? Uh, it will hit. I will sneak attack that. Are will o' wisps undead? Yes. Delicious. Delicious. Nutritious. Uh, 31 points of damage between slashing damage and then sneak attack and ex an extra thunder damage. 1d6 thunder damage for the undead. All right. And it does. You, you manage to catch it and slice through it just after the shock leaves it. And then I'm going to step around to the other one. On Roswell's right. other side, I'm going to flank that one. I'm going to take a swing at it. My second attack. All right. So the... What portion of that is the thunder damage? Is it just 1d6? It is... I think it's that four hovering over it. Because it looks like... Because I have 4d6 sneak attack. Okay. Or after that. Uh, 26 yes, last... will hit. And so this is no sneak attack, just the extra 1d6 thunder damage. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Moonblade. 14 points, one of which is thunder. All right. So that one, you do uh, pierce into it, but it doesn't uh, doesn't disapparate. It's just sort of just, um, jerks back and forth, kind of an erratic pattern, um, trying to oh, jerk. dodge you, Kindra, you... Oh, wait, I didn't sort this at all. Uh, Numerius. Numerius, you're up. 
Uh, Nomarius is, if there's one close to my edge of things, I was toward the beginning of the group. I yeah. Move toward it. You can assume minutes. that you can kind of get within range of any of them. Hmm. Um, I will, uh, <laughs> uh, if there's enough space to go around to the other side, and is it against somebody? Or are there any close ones that are engaged with i will i will say or... that you could probably you probably have flanking on just about any of them that you want because they're all just interspersed between you and everyone oh excellent then i don't if you if i don't have to move even better i'm just yeah. uh swinging away so here's one on one that's nearby me as i've rolled in oh with flanking you say even though i i heard you i didn't do it so uh it does an 18 for the first attack hit uh, 18 does not hit. Okay. And then uh, I uh, I grimace. You know, just a disapproving, like I failed myself more than anyone else. And then here's my next attack, but with the advantage toggle correct. And this one hits a 26. Uh, 26 will hit. All of the magic bludgeoning damage is 10, but I'm not going to put any extra sting or divine smite on it because uh, I don't know these things or how um, All right. they look like they're real flimsy alright it is now their turn um, so there are ten of these uh, they flit into all around surrounding kind of Roswell and um, did none of them die? and Tebrin, uh, I got one. one of them oh. is gone that's important uh, burr, 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 burr. So, we're going to say there are four attacks against you, Roswell, and then Ooh. three attacks against, uh, one attack against Amarius, two against, um, Tebrin. So, four coming at you. These are all with advantage as they kind of have swarmed around Roswell. Um, so, four shock attacks coming at you. 21. Yep. 18. Nope. 22. Yes. And a 15. Two of them hit me. So for a total of 28 lightning damage going through pretty well on that as they just... So that's four. Um, so... Another two. These are coming at you, Tebrin. One, two. Uh, neither hit. And then nope. one. So that's six. Uh, another one at you for good measure. Um, Who at 18. Me? Yeah. 18 does hit me. Okay. Uh, so that's 13 points of lightning damage as these things just sort of Uncanny swarm dodge. In. All right. Uh, and then. So, so that'll be six. Right. Yep. And then there'll be uh, one will attack uh, one of the guards sort of in the middle of this as they all sort of swing out. Um, that will hit the guard. Uh, seven points, not enough to kill him as he, he does sort of uh, go back. It shocks him. He kind of uh, drops his weapon as it shocks out of his hand. He goes goes to grab it in the ground beside uh um, on the edge of the precipice uh, begins to crack and there's a large chunk of it uh, that looks like it's about to kind of cave down off and tumble in. Um, on this chunk are Akira and Kendra. Uh, all right. Uh, burr, 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 burr. That will do it for those and one attack against you, Nomarius. Uh, 14 does not hit. Kendra, you are up as you see the guard sort of uh, bend down. This like triangular crack starts uh, going sort of right underneath where your feet are. What are you doing? Uh, I want to hop away from that. All right. If you can, you can move like one or two. Uh, you can move like five feet away, no problem. But if you want to like beeline, you're going to start taking attacks. Uh, just, just, just five feet away is yep. fine. Uh, and then I want to ones that aren't directly next to me i just want to start popping off agonizing blasts all right so i'm going to agonizing blast and then quicken another agonizing blast 
All right. So, and uh, I'm just going to fire these, and if one dies, I'll switch to another. Okay. 13 misses. Does not hit. 26 hits. 20 hits. 19 hits. 25 hits. One, two, so the 13 three, misses. Four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 4 hits. Right. Two, four, five, six. One, two, three, four hits, yes. I thought it was only two blasts per cantrip. It's three blasts per cantrip. Based on this level. It's two on the first cantrip. Up, Thirteen and points. Then three. Two, three. Twenty-six. Um that so the the first one strikes one of the ones that Tevern hits. That one shatters. Uh, wait, why did that roll three dice? Right. Um, so that one does as as it bursts, it will explode. Um, that one is between Tebrin and Roswell, and as it explodes, it does uh, twelve points more of lightning damage, and that will hit several guards and um, both uh, Tebrin is, and Roswell. Is this a dexterity save situation, nope. or does it just happen? It's just to happen. Uh, well, I hate that. Are there any of these that aren't... I mean, I've already fired them off, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just... I'm applying the damage mechanically to where it would be, and this is the first time you've seen that. So if you want to, um, now knowing that, target other ones, I can start spreading your damage around as I see fit. I want to target ones that <laughs> like are, like, a gentle blanket? either not next to people or next to as few people as possible. Okay. All of them are next to someone, so it's just a question of whether you're hitting guards or your party or any of that. I have a funny feeling I know where the next one's going. <laughs> How oh, many are no. next to Demarius? <laughs> uh, there's one next to Demarius right now. Alright, it's getting popped. Alright, uh, so give me damage on that one. 14. 14 points. Uh, that one does explode as well. Um, there are seven left. I'm gonna give you the deadest, most can like look. Whew. 16 points of lightning damage, and uh, as as you sort of wince from this, this arc through your armor, uh, you see uh, one of the guards in front of you kind of like recoil as it, it kind of catches, and you can see the bolt just like go through its his throat, and his, you can just see it's all just sort of black and charred, and his body just falls. Um, sort of lifeless on the ground there. Um, these are not adventurers that are with you. All right. Um, so let's keep going. We have two. Uh, so we had four hits there. Where, where else would you like to target? There's a whole uh, bunch of them surrounding Tebrin and Roswell. So there are seven left, and we will say six of those are around Tebrin and Roswell. The other, the other one is in the midst of four soldiers. All right, I feel like I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. That's good. It's okay. We can take it better than oh, they can. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hit the ones next to uh, Tavern and Russell. Just focusing whatever has been hit, and then just whatever. okay. Nothing else has been hit, so these are all okay, freshies. Then, yeah. 14, so Fourteen does not destroy one. Are you targeting uh, the same one again? Yeah, the same one again. Okay, so that one uh, will poof. <coughs> and this is for Tevrin and Roswell. Five more points Better. of lightning damage. You sort of recoil a little bit to uh, lessen the damage there. Uh, so that's all four shots, right? So yeah, you're so left all... with uh, six of them remain. Uh, Roswell, you, you are up. Nope, not that. Sorry. I meant to do turn undead and destroy undead. Damn it. There right. we go. So I'm going to channel divinity, calling down Istis to push these abominations of undead away from me. Um, so uh, it's my spell save DC, correct? That they need to make? I believe so. Okay. So depending on the CR, don't they just fail? Yeah, the it's two. It's two. All right. They don't auto fail. 
Right. It's a uh, it's below that level, not at that level and below. Uh, okay, so they're all making wisdom saves. Correct. And there are six of them left. And so what, is, what am I trying to... Uh, my spell save to see is at 18. Okay. And on their turn, we will see what happens. As this sort of burst of radiant energy springs out and you can see almost all of them kind of recoil um a little bit from it and it's almost like this kind of shock wave extends out not damaging but uh definitely affecting them somehow um anything else you'd like to do roswell um that is it uh and they're still all around me correct yep they haven't had a chance to move yet um, I am just going to be like, like as imposing as I can, like, all right, two balls of lightning or whatever they are. Akira, you are up. I would like to do mass healing word at third. So that should hit everybody. I believe it doesn't have within 60 feet. All right. Um, and then I like to put my shield up and dispel my orbs. My dancing right. lights. Sorry. Dancing lights drops, and you see the the number of adversaries seemingly decrease by four. Um, all right. Uh, cool. Uh, the guards are going to fire off and make attacks at all the things you just turned um so we will see if they hit um i'm just gonna roll all of these at once and all of these will be plus five and so there are what seven seven guards remaining so these are all plus five and we'll see what hits and what doesn't so that's one so two hits the rest are misses all right i'm just going to use average damage so keep this moving along um that and that all right uh tebrin you are back up um it did that mass healing word seem to have any effect on the soldier that went down nope i see like gone gone he's gone gone he's dead he's dead jim um well, I believe the description also had him fall off the side. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't fall off the side. He just kind of fell oh, oh. around towards the, the well, side. I mean, there's not really anything I can do aside from. Uh... Dagger of healing. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Wait. So there's one that's surrounded by them. Or did I see which two? Because I like, I've seen Roswell's stuff enough to know kind of what it does. Which were the two that just got hit by the soldiers? Uh, there are two that are by you. Okay, I'm gonna go for one of those. Okay. Make some attack rolls. Here comes the first one. Twenty nine. All right, that'll hit. And I didn't have advantage on this, and I you said that they're all around me? Yeah. We have discovered the one situation in which I don't get sneak attack. <laughs> it's like it was planned. 13 points, three of which are thunder damage. All right. Counted the for... thunder damage is coming from the moon blade? Yes. Thunder moon? That's weird. Who wrote it doesn't this like stuff? undead thing. I don't know why it does thunder damage. It came to me that way. Um, I guess I will take my second. She didn't read the instructions. It's just... <laughs> it should be a radiant damage. It's it's on yeah, it's on uh it's set to thunder right now. Just gonna turn one of the knobs. Oh, what's it in a different language? The different instructions. Yeah, That's yeah she's using the Chinese mood blade. Twenty five. Twenty five hits. 
mood blade. Uh, 20 points of damage. All right. Five so of which are thunder. That one that you... So that's on the same one. You're just keeping attacking it. Yeah. Okay. So that one will burst. Uh, this is going to hit you, Roswell, and two of the... Um, ah, hell. Two of the and guards. Um, so 12 points. Uh, I can't. Can you take? You can't take a reaction on your turn, right? You can. Yeah, you can. You can. But it is uh, your reaction until the start of your next turn. I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna take. All right. Turn. So the explosion ripples into the guards. Uh, they look uh, sort of burned, but they manage to stay standing during this. All right. That does it for you, Nomaris. You are up. Oh, I thought you said it does it for me. I'm like, what? All right. <laughs> You're uh, dead. Is there any near me or near any that it's exclusively near me? Uh, you'd have to move closer. The one that was next to me was popped. <laughs> yes. By, uh, so That's I will you. move move Thank to you. one that is that is off on its own. All right. You may have heard of me, but it's uh, hammer time. Uh, oh, I don't suppose I have advantage anymore. Uh, you do not. There's not enough. Uh... And a natural one will, for some strange reason, not connect. All right. Uh, um, I need you to roll me the second attack. Uh, <laughs> Is that roll, what you're talking roll about? me a d6. Wait. No. <laughs> just there's no way I'm oh, roll me a d8. Uh oh, no, oh, the direction dice. Okay, so oh, assuming no. number one is north, and depending on which direction we're going, be northwest. Let me roll uh, northwest. <laughs> Bravo. All right. Uh, you swing at one of these uh, with such ferocity, but uh, you don't realize that it kind of baits you, and then at the last second darts out of the, your way, and you just see Tebrin right there. And Tebrin, you take a huge slam, sort of figuring out the other way as the Warhammer connects into you. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for me. Okay, I'm going to put the Divine Smite, and I'm also going to... No. That's <laughs> just add all the stuff. Uh, it's only 14. All right. As Tebrin, ah. you just feel just this like crack as your shoulder kind of pushes forward. Um, um wait a minute. You you're can, not a wisp. You can no, continue, I'm not. What? <laughs> that, that, that's the wisp's fault. And then I'll move back to the wisp and take my second attack with only a seventeen to hit. Seventeen will miss again. As it, it seems like it's toying with you, trying to you swing, and one of the other guards just sort of like dodges out of the way too. These things are incredibly fast. Oh, by the way, back away, people! I'm trying to work here. It's all your fault. I'm sorry. Grab that. Actually, oh, I'm not right. done. I guess I'll action surge and try it again since I'm so frustrated at this moment. All right. I wasn't gonna. Here's the first attack against the same one that's been toying with me, 23. All right, that will hit, 13. And add uh, it in. Same thing. Same thing. Yep. A 30 to hit. Uh, I don't see it, but yeah, okay. Go for it. it. No, I didn't oh. see the 30. Um, 15 points of bludgeoning for the 30. Uh, yes, 15 points right. of bludgeoning for the that 30. That one will explode. Um, okay. That hits you, Tebrin, and the soldier next to you. I told them to back away. How could they not do that on my turn? <laughs> they're so they're dumb. They're dummies. Oof. Dude. Um, that 16, one I'm going to uncanny dodge. 16 points of lightning damage, and the soldier kind of uh, dodges out of the way and sort of raises his sword up. Um, kind of stepping back from you and the lightning just catches catches on the sword and just goes straight into his face and after it sort of all dissipates in the flash you just see his face just completely melted and he just kind of falls backwards over um, over down past the chasm and you just hear a tr -tr 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 
And then you hear... He's probably going to be fine. All right. Um, it is now the Will-O-Wisp's turn. You see... You see three of them disappear. And how many remain? Not explode. There are three remaining... You guys have been damaging some of them. What, what did the turn on dead do to them? I thought there were only six total. Uh, the turn on dead has taken its effect. Oh, okay. okay. Um, they have other things that they can do too. Um, uh, so three of them remain. Uh, these are sort of in the Teberin, Roswell, Numerius land. So uh, they are going to focus in on Teberin as he appears to be doing the most damage here to them. And so that is going to be three, two of them with advantage. Um, burr, 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 burr. Where is the button? So those are on you, Teberin. First one, second one. 21, 14, and the last one's not an advantage, is an 11. Only the 21 hits. All right, so you take seven points of lightning damage uh, from that volley. Now to the third. And... Noted and accounted for. That is going to do it for them. Kinder, you're up. Three of them remain sort of in the midst of your uh, allies as that part of the ground um, that everyone has kind of now moved off of just crumbles and tumbles down into the ravine itself. Okay. Um, how many of the ones remaining are damaged? Uh, all of them. All of them? Okay. That's why uh, they're still here. <laughs> I'll start off with just... Okay, I'm just going to agonizing blast and work through them. 24. Hits. Does not hit. All right, I oh. want you to roll a, uh, a d8. <laughs> Tebrin, stop. Don't, don't move, Tebrin. Three. You've already used your, your reaction. It's You're going to be fine. All right, so uh, let's start rolling these out. So roll damage for the first one that hits one of them, one of the will-o'-wisps. Great. Six points, that is enough. That one will explode. Thank God. Um, well, actually, it's sort of not, but... It's sort of bad, actually. So this is going to hit... Tebrin, uh, Nomarius, and two soldiers, as you guys are all sort of in a little pack. Ten, the soldiers take it. All right, the next one, um, unfortunately, since it's very crowded in here, this will strike one of the soldiers that just took that, and you go you go to hit it, and the first one explodes, and the energy kind of pushes your aim off, and it slams into the back of um, one of the one of the soldiers, who kind of falls to his knees, and you just see this like burnt out hole through the center of his shoulder, and then he just sort of falls flat onto the ground. Um, and third one. Third one. <laughs> Brutal murder. Moving on. Does not hit. Um, I didn't hold on. Let see. Me just the spell. It is. You can't see it. No, nope. one did the roll. It's but you said, okay, a thirteen doesn't hit. Uh, and then I'm, I'm just checking this spell really quick. Uh, who who is hurt and how? Uh, you guys. All of our party members besides yourself. I, I mean, sorry. I mean, uh, how many guards are down to? Uh, three guards have died so far. But they're died dead. or they're just... They're, I don't think the guards are getting death saving throws. Well, One uh, of them has fallen over the ravine. Um, he's obviously missing his face. Okay. You've basically blown a chunk in one guy's uh, body that's about the location of where his heart is. My, um, my, qu my question is, and this is sort of... Will healing magic help them at all? If they're you included? have the distinct impression that they are beyond the help of magic. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will hold mm. off on no witnesses. Keep going. Spell for now. 
and we can use it later. In which case, I'm just going to quicken another agonizing blast to try and kill either more soldiers or more wisps. It's up in the air. This All right. Point. I wonder if I can. Natural twenty. All right. I, I can. I totally can. I'm just going to roll that for my satisfaction. Um, All right, excellent. <laughs> as as that other one sort of falls it's and tight. and <laughs> you managed to you managed to catch um, the the second one, and that is enough to kill um, the pen ultimate of these, uh, which does explode. Um, this is a. Uh, I'm just taking my time. We'll say this is a. Uh, Akira hasn't been in any of this. Uh, we'll say this is an Akira and a couple of soldiers. Um, uh, 12 points of lightning damage there. As these are just like, the lightning just keeps catching all of the metal bits on you and everything is just so chaotic that it is not possible to dodge. All right. Um, and that last one, I need you to roll a D8. You can do it. Oh, fuck. All right. So that is another one of the soldiers. Oh. Um, so go ahead and roll damage. Uh, it's not the worst. All right. Um, you go back, and one of, the, one of the soldiers is uh, is prepping to... Uh, he goes... Ha has a sword, goes to swing, and you go, and you just... Poosh, it just blows off the... Uh, the sort of upper part of his arm as it just tumbles off into the abyss. And he just grabs it and starts screaming and falls to his knees. Fair! That's oh, a fair uh, reaction! <laughs> God. Wait, did he grab the part that blew off? No, no, he's just grabbing oh, the God, I caught it. thing that's oh, crap. Uh, spouting blood. Alright, there is one um, one will o wisp alive. Roswell, you are up. No, that was my... oh. I had one more attack. 15 does worry. not hit. Yeah. It misses. You guys, are, you guys are brutalizing each other. I, I feel that Quentin Tarantino directed this specific. This is the problem with theater of mine. I, I can't tell where anyone is, and I'm, everything is just a big mistake. Yeah. Um, I I'm think gonna... that's actually just our party in general. I can't see anything that's going on, and really, we're just a big mistake. Uh, All right, so there are three dead guards. Enough. One of them is missing a large section of part of their arm. So there are only four healthy guards left. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do Sacred Flame on the four guards. Guards. All right. Uh, that is a dexterity save on oh. their part. Um, 21. God damn it. Um, they have plus uh, nine to dexterity. Yeah, I realized that when I kind of... Um, so it just immediately kind of dodges out of the way. It's You have a feeling that it kind of knows what it's doing versus that sort of thing. Uh, Does it make any like, no! Move no, you have to be. <laughs> we do so much damage to each other. We just have to stay here for a while and don't kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I hate it. it. Thank I you. I regret wow. that already. <laughs> okay, Oof. so I'm going to do... Um... Uh, let's do Mass Healing Word as my bonus action at third level. Okay. Uh, let me roll that up. Um, eight. Three. So, and that gets six creatures so my party plus any remaining soldiers i will forego it okay there are soldiers that uh get healed from that okay thank you Roswell. you're welcome all right akira i One will poof remains also cast sacred flame on the remaining wisp all right dexterity save that is a 14. My DC is 17. So that to be a 12. All right. And as Roswell sort of sparks, it dodges one way and you're like, got you now. And you just grab it um, on the other side and it explodes in your face. 
Okay. Um, uh, and you take nine points of lightning damage. This is <laughs> explodes right in your face. I missed the lightning sword. I could have resisted all this. Um, and then I will immediately go over to the soldier that has no longer an arm and start to <laughs> try to bandage and uh, fix him up. That's right, you're a combat medic. I, this is what I do! Yeah. Um, so you, you grab him. Uh, Libraries and go bandages. Ahead, make, a, make a medicine check for me. A medicine check. 28. Ooh. All right, so expertly you go through, uh, sort of bandage it up. It does uh, stop bleeding, and you all kind of make your way into the passage, sort of tunnel um, back beyond this, and... You just hear, again, this sort of gleeful um, laughter echoing up at you as uh, Burns kind of stands pacing back and, f and forth. And you can tell that he's sort of like biting his tongue, but is absolutely irate as he just um, takes his fist and just slams it into the, um, the rocky wall there. It sort of cascades down. And he just sort of uh, turns, uh, looking at you, Kendra. Doesn't say anything, but just sort of, like, stands there and just, like, everything can take in his composure. Kendra sort of slumps down the wall a bit and sits on the ground with her head in her hands. And that's where we're going to end tonight. All initiatives. I'm confused. Oh. Wait, who is this thing? Is it not Tom 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 the Cook? Blah, blah, blah. We don't know. Oh, it's we don't know. The sergeant we're with, or whatever. Okay, he's the battalion leader. There's other dangers down here, other than the yeah Tomatuk. That was that was rough. <gasps> oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> okay. Good. Sorry. So. That was a rough one. Welcome back to the how Underdark. Is, how was that worse than when we were fighting fucking Oxymon? Well, like, so, because so many friendly people. Because no map. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I blame the map. Everything is next to everything. So, welcome back to the Underdark. It seems like it's gotten progressively harder, even though yeah. <laughs> it's the same Underdark. Go figure. But um, you guys have fought Will Wisp before, though, right? Yeah. So, uh, and when? especially especially the cleric, you might not have been here, but they definitely have. Um, clerics would know that Will Wisps do form as sort of spirits of dead creatures. Um, so there may be an area oh. through which so you can speak to the dead. Um, things have floated up from where these like recently. I, you don't know how recently they can form, but you know. What's an expiration date on a will o' wisp? <laughs> you know, what's the what's the half life of a will o' wisp? So we will uh, see where that goes next time. Ow, ow, all right. Uh, which is yes, next Monday at. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I didn't mention them at the beginning, so I will do so now. Big thank you to our sponsor, Roll20. Um, great uh, to be part of their highlight uh, spotlight program. And uh, music by Kevin McLeod. All of that goodness. If you haven't already, please follow us on Twitch and Twitter and check out the website at rollitslant.com. You can find us on Twitter at Roll It Slant. Uh, and then hit that little follow button if you haven't. Um, and if you follow, I will talk like a will o wisp forever. Hey, so, what happened? Is there a way to stop it? Yeah, you have to follow. <laughs> you just keep following. <laughs> so. Thank everybody for watching. It's been fun. It's been a little long, but I think we're making progress as we descend. We don't know what's happening to Sayora. She appears to be low on the priority list, so maybe she's a wisp. But these strangers need their help. 
our help. Yes. Sora's fine. <laughs> it's weird that you guys don't have any allies. Um, cool. Well, I will see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. <laughs>